Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarose. And this is the Nerdy. The Wordy. The Book Club. That's right. Welcome back for The Well of Ascension, parts three and four, the middle third of the book. Yep. Yep. What a, what a middle. What, what a, you know what? What a middle. <laughs> Malcolm in the middle, you know? I, yeah, I never watched it. You've never seen Malcolm? Oh, yeah. No, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> it's a wild show. I, I heard good things. I just, I don't know, never, uh, never got around to it, but that's fine. We're not talking about Malcolm in the Middle. We're talking about... Yeah, but like, can we talk about Malcolm in the Middle for a second? Because the dad went on to make a meth, and like, that's crazy. Oh. Yeah. But I guess Disney didn't pay him enough? Is Malcolm in the Middle a Disney show? I just assumed You didn't it get was that joke at all, did Disney you? Disney Channel. No, I don't... Who's the dad in Malcolm in the Middle? I don't know. I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> My, I'm supposed to get the joke. I make fun of Clarus so much because our job is to, like, comment on pop culture and she has no frame of reference. For I have pop no culture, culture okay? <laughs> you have culture, you just don't have pop culture. No, I'm as white as they come. I really don't have any culture. Okay, okay. White people have culture. That's like Some of them. No, no, I I I hate this argument. It is so My family has like no traditions, no like spirituality, no like Oh sure, sure, but that doesn't come from you being white. I I, I get like it's I'm very uh, vanilla. I know, but okay. I hate this, but I will uh, let's get into it. The the oh, no, whole, what have I done? like white people don't have culture thing comes from this need to break something down and other it that is an, a, a detriment like to the conversation, right? We are in this point where we're trying to have this very like reactionary cultural moment to colonialism, which I totally understand and is 100% valid. Mm -hmm. But the way to do that, in my opinion, is not to just claim that the other thing doesn't exist or to reduce it to, like, nothingness. That's fair. I don't have culture, but not because I'm white. Yeah, it's... it's th I th This it. is a much longer conversation that has nothing to do with Miss Bourne, so let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, we need to make sure we have the chat up. Because I was going to give you five memberships. Okay, you, we we have to fix the mic situation before you can just yell like that. That's my fault. That's on me. Thank you, Arazu. Thank you, Arazu. Five memos. Appreciate it. got some it. green in this chat. Yeah, okay. I think that's the only thing that we missed. I'm just going to like keep it face up over here so and check in every once in a while. Because the Daniel Clauser says, break the hierarchy. Don't invert it. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Fair. I don't have culture. It has nothing to do you with what I look you, like. No, you absolutely do. You literally do have a I degree know? in musical theater. Like, you literally have a degree in art. You can't say <laughs> that you are a cultureless person when you're, you studied your own culture. And you performed your own culture. And your job, your job coming out of college was as a cultural representative of the artistic form that you studied for years of your life. Wow. For you to be like, I don't have culture. I just performed on stages within a cultural framework that comes from the place that I grew up is fucking insane. I That's not, that, that just isn't how things fucking work, okay? Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so um, much for that super chat. Scuff Andy. Scuff Andy. Don't sleep. I'm not sleeping, you Miss are. Bourne, don't sleep. Miss Bourne, don't sleep. Danny uh, plays in queue. We have not done anything yet. You've missed nothing. You've missed absolutely nothing. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> what a wild it. intro what a wild start. to the show. Yeah. We've never had that conversation before. Yeah. Zyba says white people have culture. It's just invisible because we dominate the world. Yeah, 100%. Gotcha. It, it is uh, the, the the problem with the white people have no culture argument is that it comes from a place of not seeing white people's culture as culture because it is so dominant in the spaces that the people who make that argument come from mm. that they just see it as the baseline. Right, 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 right. And the problem with seeing it as the baseline and why I why I think it's important to make the distinction of mm -hmm. what is white person culture and what is other cultures is because white culture shouldn't be the baseline mm -hmm. but when you say white people have no culture you are making their culture the baseline you are saying that that is the standard and that every other culture deviates away from that and that is not the case white people culture is not standard it is only standard from the point of view of people within certain countries who have been 
raised to believe that. A lot like the Final Empire, right? When, when If you really want to get into it, okay, let, okay. let's make this about Mistborn. Hang on. Uh, Brian, welcome back to the nerd table for eight months. Just want to say thank you. Uh, what they say? Clarice only goes for science victories and civilization. She doesn't get, generate a single culture point at all. Not wrong. That's, no, you're Not wrong. wrong. You're wrong. I mostly go for culture victories. <laughs> well, diplomatic victory. That's the easiest one to get. Anyways. Well, but but the point that I'm making is that much like the Final Empire, if you raise people to believe that something is the standard, uh-huh. they will start to see it as the standard and not be able to put a definition on what it is, right? Mm. Now, granted, white doesn't really exist, so like that's a whole other part of it. Like, Fair. This is a multifaceted conversation. Yeah. It, this is a longer conversation that we get into. I just, I, I don't like the, uh, yeah. I, I, I find the that's argument fair. of the like, oh, well, white people don't have culture is a dangerous argument because it essentially makes anything that is white culture um the standard yes the, yeah, yeah. the the baseline for what our experience should be and i just don't i fundamentally don't agree with that at all that's fair. i don't think peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and hot dogs and i i think like the, those is things the baseline I, I don't right mayonnaise salad right a hundred percent right the, those those <laughs> elements of <laughs> American life that we think of as just being kind of how things work. Guaranteed maybe not. maybe they shouldn't be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think that we can't dismantle the system as long as we are poorly naming things within the system mm-hmm. in order to make a cultural argument on Twitter that's not that doesn't have that any doesn't value. help anyone. That just makes sure. you feel like you're puffing your chest up at something that you're not actually doing anything towards. That's what Twitter is. Yeah. Yeah, pretty Blue. much. Yeah. Blue, welcome back to the nerd table. I must assume this conversation is related to the book I did not read yet again. Blue. Blue. I love you. It's fine. I resume will mod spoilers. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what? It's fine. Blue, blue, blue is busy. Blue is very busy. Yeah. Blue is very busy. All right. Welcome in. Clarice, we've written, we've now read... Uh, Most of Well of Ascension. Two thirds of the Well of Ascension. What is the Well of Ascension? Seems to be a place somewhere. Seems to be. Maybe. Maybe. Might be. Maybe it's an idea. Do you think that Sezed nailed where it is no. by accident? Because no. that would be the funny if. No. If the map just straight up leads them to the Well of Ascension, no. and then they get back and they're like, Sazed, your map was amazing. And he's just like, I guess it was, mistress. Yeah. That's very strange. Very odd. <laughs> Super weird. <laughs> Sir Jimmer says, what is the path of daggers? That's a great, great question. Great question. Um, great, great, great question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, welcome back to the nerd table. Weird Al celebrates white and nerdy culture. That you know what? Yeah. So do I. Yeah. That he's nerd white culture. and nerdy. I've been browsing, and inspecting X Men comics. You know I collect them. The pens in my pocket. I must protect them. My ergonomic keyboard never leaves me bored. Shopping online through the readable media. I edit Wikipedia. I organize. I organize what? Um. What is he organizing? Real well. Uh, something about HTML. I think I went too fast and I got lost. Uh, R F O T L O L. That's. I had um, Wikipedia. N- uh, I don't know. Whatever. He's got his name on his underwear. Uh. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. It's fine. We've done it before. Put your name on your underwear. No, that section of the song. Oh. <laughs> We've literally <laughs> done like, it like did, on stream before. Did you put your name on your own underwear? I memorized Holy Grail real well. That's what it is. Oh, oh my god. Yep, yep, yep. Have you RFTL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. you All appreciate right. it. Um, yeah, I don't know. The Well of Ascension seems to be a place that is thumping in Vin's head. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. like my migraine right now. Um <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Yeah. Because Vin can like kind of feel where it is, the map doesn't really matter. She cannot feel where it is, though. That is an important distinction. Are you sure? Yes, because she, in this section, she's like, I th- think it's there, but it also feels closer. Well, no, she literally says, when Zane is like, where would you, wh- where would you go? He, she's like, Terrace. Like, she literally knows the direction yeah, but, it's coming but from. But when she's talking to Sazed, 
or I can't remember who she's talking to about it, but it's it's both far away and also feels like it's getting closer and also like she it doesn't feel like it's coming from a specific point in space to her, right? Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know. As she gets closer, it like hones in. I, I would buy that, absolutely. I think that once I get the terrace, it you know, it's really She's hard like, to feel a direction from so far away. Yeah. But once you get closer to something, it's easier to kind of pinpoint the exact way that you're going. Yeah. I, that that would make sense to me. She's like a metal detector. Um, yeah. So uh this was a chunk of book. Yeah. I feel like a lot happened. Um yeah. Should we get into the chapters? Should we just dive in today? Oh, uh, yeah. you know what? No. It's been two weeks and I completely forgot how to do the fucking show. Guys, we don't know how to book club anymore. This podcast is brought to you by MissyMountainGaming.com. MissyMountainGaming.com is a website that is the first ever electronic retailer. They invented buying things on the internet. Not true. This is where you get dice. This is where you get DM screens. This is where you get DM vault or dice vaults. This is where you get the accoutrement necessary to enjoy your tabletop role-playing game, much like the one we'll be playing tomorrow, Dragonlance, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come back for session five. All of the other sessions are on the YouTube channel now. If you want to go stop watching go catch up. Book Club and go watch that, don't do that. <laughs> Why would you do that? That's dumb. Book Club's awesome. Yeah. It's the best part of the week. Um, honestly, it's kind of the second best now that we have Dragonlance. I don't know. It's like they're, 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 both, they're both pretty great. I don't know. Dragonlance is like Book Club but with other people. And I don't have to just talk to you. I can actually talk to friends. Mm, that's fair. And not Very just boring. the woman that keeps me hostage in her house. Um, go to Missy Mountain Gaming. I, I, I wish I owned this house. We're in the house. middle of an ad read. We're in the middle Let's of an ad read. Wait, wait, wait. We forgot the ad read. The, go um, to MissyMountainGaming.com and use coupon code NerdyNightly15 for 15% off your order. MissyMountainGaming.com. Accoutrement. Nailed it. Ad over. Um, <laughs> God damn it. I don't know what's happening today. Uh, the Well of Ascension. The Well of Ascension. Um, yep. They had the prettiest planes. Why? <laughs> so I became a flight engineer. Why? And Why the are World we... War II pilots, they all complain. Why are we doing Come From Away? It's not even related. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyways. Anyways, Ellen... Not a king anymore. Fuck that guy. The Wait, assembly what? was like, yeah, get out of here. We hate you. And he was like, ah, oh, shit, that sucks. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, Tinderwilla was like, why would you write a law that lets you not be king anymore? And he's like, because that's fair. And she's like, ugh, stupid. <laughs> he's like, no, that's, that's a democracy, kind of. Democracy. <laughs> or is it a republic? Um, I mean, yeah, both. Sure. Yeah, you can you can depose. Um, uh, I love democracy. I mean, you don't have like a love king in either, right? But you That's can de- you can have a vote of no confidence. L- that that just happened to Liz Truss, I think was her name, the the British Prime Minister that lasted lo- less than a head oh, of lettuce. Oh, yeah. Wasn't she? Like two was, weeks? Didn't she get a, a vote of no confidence? Is that what it was? I think so. That was wild. If you're in the UK, wow, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's any monarchy on Earth that has this. Where so, you can depose the monarch? I, like, uh, they are the monarch because they were born the monarch? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know of any monarchy, any monarchy that allows this, but it is um, in the parliamentary system and in the presidential system in the States. Yeah. Although deposing the president is really hard. Um, of course it is. The I think it's the 25th Amendment. It's there. there there's like there's th- I think three different ways to get rid of the president, but all of them are like n- none of them have ever happened. Um, That's a shame. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, Becca Karn says it seems like a monarchy in name only. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, yes. That's yeah. that is that is Ellen objectively is like, correct. I heard the word king one time. So that's what we're going to go with. He, no, you know what it was? Ellen was like, my uh, favorite anime is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And the leader of that country's name was King. His so I think that king. I'm going to be so King So I'm going to be King. That sounds great. <laughs> you know what? Why not? <laughs> the most insane thing about that show is that his name is Fuhrer King Bradley. 
Yeah. But that King is not part of his title of Fuhrer. No, it's just that it's he, his name. His name is he King. He has the title of Fuhrer, and then his name is King. Yeah. It is It is such a wild, insane choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Dachshund's like, you You gotta try and, like, I don't know, fuck around to, to make sure you get your throne back. Um, and then, like, Clubs is like, no, you should, f- like, fight everybody. Just take over the armies and, like, take the city hostage. And Ellen is like, no, what the fuck? Like, I didn't write these laws in so that I could then, like, ignore them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, they're there for a reason. And if they don't want me here, then, like, is what it is. But he doesn't give up without a fight. Which is, I mean, not like a fight fight. But, like, you know, like, uh, 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 the going about the legal avenues for becoming king again yeah yeah which we'll get into because they're insane i don't i don't know i you know what i don't know here's here's my thing i i I understand that like you have to have a leader but the idea that you would write a system of laws in which you can have a vote to depose the king and then you have two weeks to elect a new king. But if you don't elect a new king in those two weeks... the pr- uh, 30 days. You, if you can't get a, a three-quarter um, vote on the new king... What is that number exactly? Because we were trying to figure oh, it out. Oh, it's because I was wrong. There's 24 assembly members, not 22. And so all, Oh, I said 22. I was wrong. In the audiobook reaction, I was doing math based on there being 22 people in the assembly. And I was like, none of this makes sense. But it's because yeah. there's 24 gotcha. and I'm just dumb. Because I was like, oh yeah, 8 times 3 is 22. It is not. Um... I was just, if you watch the audiobook reaction, you're like, wow, David's an idiot. I, I said 22, so both of us did math wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's but, fine. But the idea that you would build a system in which you could depose a king, mm-hmm. and then you have 30 days to, to vote anybody else in, and if you don't, that person just becomes king again. Someone's makes, gotta be. Makes no fucking sense. Why? Because, because why wouldn't you just... The same people that just deposed him uh-huh. could just vote to depose him again. Like, sure. there's no, unless there's like a double jeopardy thing where like you can only do this once a year or something. <laughs> it, it is an insane system that does not quite make sense to me. I don't know. I think I I think that makes sense. Why? They just voted no confidence to remove that person from power. And that person just automatically gets power back again. Well, that's why they have to. So that's, here's the thing. It it ensures that the people who vote no confidence need to have a plan for who is going to be next. They can't just be like, nah, fuck you, I hate you. And then leave everything open to to like chaos, right? Because if if you can depose somebody and then have nobody in there for weeks or months, like that's bad for everyone. You, there has to be a plan in place. And if there isn't, yes, but that plan, then the guy who's running shit gets to run shit again. That plan cannot be that if you are a monster of a king, that there's and they just can't get the votes behind one person, that that monster just gets to be king again. The, the ways in which that that could go horribly wrong for everybody is wild. Okay, name a political system that hasn't gone wrong. That hasn't gone wrong? Yeah. Where where bad shit like that has never happened. What system should be in place instead? Well, no, I I I think that most systems have better safeguards than Ellen's. I think that the safeguard that Ellen has put in place is bad, but the system's fine. It's just that th- it's just that that person gets to be back in charge again that's insane. No matter what, right? That there's a firm, like, you have one month, and then that person, if you cannot get a three-quarter parliament, which means that... Makes sense to me, I don't know. But but the problem is that, so Straff Venture becomes king. He's immediately the worst, the economy's tanking, everything is fucking terrible. Yeah. They depose him. Yeah. Straff Venture then, you know, fucking bribes eight people. Uh Uh-huh. And the other 16 uh-huh. are voting against him, but because, or, or nine people, uh-huh. right? And you have 15 people voting for somebody else uh-huh. and nine voting for a tyrant. Uh-huh. Those nine people suddenly get to keep a tyrant in power. You, are, you have minority rule, essentially. Which is the problem with the American system. And it's why I hate I was gonna American say, politics. I was going to say, 
seems to be pretty similar to, to things we already got, so I don't I don't know what the... Okay, but you can't say, yeah, but what's your problem with it? It's like the American system that you complain about constantly. Of Yeah, I also... <laughs> I am being consistent. <laughs> the American system is ass, and this is also ass. You're also assuming Straff wouldn't just come in and, like, and, 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 like, either kill everybody or make a new system or, like, get rid of it, like... No, but I'm saying that Ellen, in writing it, is hoping that it is going to last for generations. Mm -hmm. And in order for that to happen, you have to have better safeguards than if you get voted out, they have 30 days to figure shit out or else you just get your power back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sounds like politics to me. <laughs> that doesn't make it not a bad system. Sure, I just am you're, like, you're, I don't you're know being what like, else. Oh, it's just, oh, yeah, but it's okay that Ellen made a bad thing because the politics are bad, but I, I don't, don't agree with that. I, I think that we can have better systems in I place. don't have a solution, so. Okay, but not having this, I don't have a solution either. I'm just saying that this system is bad. Eh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Tindwell's like, don't get distracted by Vin. Pretty much, yeah. She's too hot for you, boy. You can't handle the heat of that sexy little tomboy. <laughs> she likes she likes to be both, you know. She likes she still likes those dresses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, that's, that's kind of it. You know what? Mimong says he did all right for his first time writing a legal system. That's fair. You know what? I'll give him that. Yeah, I think that that's valid. Alexander Hamilton, he is not. But he is much better than Alexander Hamilton in every other way. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Look, Hamilton did some good stuff, but also, like, yeah. look at what we have today. Like, <laughs> Yeah, Ellen was, Ellen was doing his best. He read a lot of books about it. Yeah. He hadn't really seen them in action. Yeah. And we, you know what, we have history to draw upon. So, yeah, he did, he done good. You know, he done good, kid. We, he also has history to draw upon. I mean, barely. He had to, like, uh, okay, pretend but, that he didn't. <laughs> but, but that's what those books are. <laughs> but, like, he hasn't seen it happen himself. He has read other people's descriptions of what they believe were the, like, wins and failings of systems. Like, he hasn't had the okay, but how experience many... in, a, in a system that is not the Lord Ruler. Okay, that's fair. But how many failed systems have we lived under? All of our ideas of failed systems come from books. And, you know, that, the history, we Pretty have history sure to look back on. the U.S. system is a failure. Uh, I mean, it's the longest lasting democracy ever, so I can't say that that is true. Well, I, <laughs> statistically, most democracies are, should have failed by now. So, it, America, America is like the length of its democracy is impressive. The quality of its democracy at times isn't, but the the length of it is. Okay, sure. Yeah. I guess that's how you like qual qualify its success. Sure. That you did that you lasted longer than other people who tried. I think that's a yeah. That's that's typically how that's typically how successes are measured in things that don't have ends. Or or sorry, that aren't infinite, right? You're either the fastest to do something or you're the longest to do something. Those are kind of the two world records that we keep like, tallies um, on. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um He's got all the longest Broadway musicals. <laughs> The longest lasting, you know what I mean? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Yeah. I mean, the longest lasting on Broadway. Yeah. If you go off Broadway, Fantastic beats it by, you know, a decade or two. What is Fantastic? The Fantastics? The longest lasting musical in New York City? Oh, no, I don't know it. This is what I mean by, you're like, you went to school for musical theater, and I'm like, yeah, yep, sure did. Cool, 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 Sure cool. did. Uh, anyways... Um, this is such an inane conversation. Michael Kioski, thank you for that super chat. Ellen found an old textbook on politics called To Rule Man. Turns out it was a crook book. <laughs> well, Ellen should have cross-referenced his resources <laughs> that were also hidden in weather books and um, farming books. Yeah. 
Uh, All right, chapter 29. Uh, This is going very well. (laughs) Judah, thank you for the super chat. This is the point. Ellen is a bad leader at this point. Yeah, he's learning. He's he's doing his best, you know? He might figure it out. He might not. I don't know. Maybe. He might. I, I don't know. I, I I believe in him. Can I make a prediction? Sure. Ellen is going to snap at some point and become a pewter arm. And the point is going to be the first time him and Vin have sex because she's always burning her medals. They definitely have fucked. No. No, in the in the final chapter, when Vin like takes her shirt off, Ellen is like, "Oh my god, I can't look at titties." Pretty sure He's Brandon Sanderson never seen her n- was naked. like, "Yeah, they definitely like could be. It's tough up to you like" Then why would he be all skittish about her being topless in front of him? Because it's not like a sexual um, scenario? No, if he was comfortable with her nudity, he would be helping. But he's like literally like a virgin in the corner being like, oh, I can't look. She's naked. No, they are definitely fucking. He's then that to, scene like, is written very strange. If they, if they like, had sex before, he is behaving very irrationally in that scene to me. Yeah, but, like, there's another person there, and Vin is hurt, and so he's, like, trying to, I think, be what he thinks is respectful. Of, like, oh, oh, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. No, help. She's fucking bleeding out. What is he gonna do? He's not a fucking doctor. He, hold a rag or some he shit. Is. No, he's, no, he gives such, like, little oh virgin behavior in that scene. Oh, my God. No, they're if definitely If you fucking... were bleeding out on a table and I was, like, there with you, I would not pretend to be fucking nervous about your boobs. Yeah, because we live in a very different society. <laughs> I don't know that we do sexually. I mean, the ska, like, only believe in fucking monogamy. You know what I mean? Like, it's that or nothing. Oh, sure. I I just mean that, like, because Brandon Sanderson doesn't write about the sexual relationships of his characters very often, I don't know what the feelings about sex are in this book. Like, there's a lot of talk of rape, and that's kind of the only sexual relationship we ever hear about in Mistborn. So... Sex is either a prudish thing or it's much more casual than we think because there it, it doesn't seem like this book has ever really set up any healthy sexual relationship, right? The only sexual relationships we have are rape between the nobleman and the ska, uh-huh. uh, Breeze and Orian, and Orian is... Aurian. What? Aurian. Okay. Uh, uh, she is rioting him into fucking her... Which is not rape, but, like, if rape was Saturn, it would be one of its rings. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, and, Dwayne, thank you for that super chat. Try to remember a thank time you. in September. Thank you so much. Um, so, he, so, so, I don't know what uh, any of these characters' relationships to sex outside of violence and coercion are. Because they it doesn't exist. There is nobody having sex in any of these books. Not even on page, but, like, there's no references to sex at all outside of violence and coercion as a symptom of the final empire. Alright, I'm just, Brandon Sanderson has been like, I mean, yeah, they were fucking. During this year, though, yes. or in the future? Yes. How do you know that? Because I, I literally, like, someone shared a thing about it. Spoilers. No, it, it wasn't. It was not spoilers. Coming for you, chat. He just kind of, like, he didn't want to write about it because he didn't want to write about it. And people could kind of leave it open to their interpretation. If people wanted to believe that they never had sex before they got married, then they could do so. I I think that if you're leaving it open to the audience's interpretation, then this scene doesn't do that for me, my taste. I think that the way that Ellen is behaving around her nudity in this scene is... If they'd had sex a couple of times, maybe, but they've been together for over a year, Mm -hmm. it feels... It feels chaste and... um, Jane Austen no, in a way that not, I it's the same thing when Vin shows up in the first book in her like underwear and everyone in the room is like oh god oh god and she's like what what's the problem my like ska clothing is the same 
And I think it's saying that he was like, well, it's because it's underwear. And she's like, so? Like, yeah, they just have, are, like, th- weird those ideas. Those aren't people who have been having sex with her for a year. Those are people looking at a 16-year-old girl walking into the room in her underwear. That's a very different situation than your girlfriend is bleeding out on the table and you're being prudish about her nudity while she's bleeding. Like, I, th- those situations are so wildly different. It's also a group of adult men with a child in the room in her underwear that they look at as like a sister and Ellen who has been sleeping with her for a year. I'm like those like, I don't think you can compare I, that. They have very different ideas of what like modesty is in this world. I don't think that's true at all. I think that if a 16-year-old girl walked into a room now in her underwear, I would be like, no, I'm not going to stare at you. No, but the point is that her underwear looks exactly like her normal clothes. But they have this weird idea that because it's called underwear or whatever, that, like, it makes a difference. We have that now, though. You can wear a bikini and people won't bat an eye. But if you wear a bra and panties, which covers the exact same thing but is maybe a little bit thinner material, people will act differently around you. If I, if I am, in, yeah, if I I am alone people. in a room with a 16-year-old girl and she's in a bikini or she's in her underwear, that is a fundamental difference in terms of how I'm going to behave. Right? Yeah, okay. We, we we draw those distinctions now. That's not crazy. But also, she's a kid in that book. And mm-hmm. now she's an adult in an adult relationship with this girl. Right? Like, I just think that... I, I It just doesn't come across to me that they have the intimacy necessary to have had sex in the last year. They don't think about each other in a way that makes me think that if they are having sex, it's very healthy because Vin is like ready to leave Ellen. She's like that fucking Zane boy. He, he can burn metal. So he's better for me. Like they don't, they don't have I mean, yeah, that a is sexual definitely... relationship in any way. They're not physically intimate in these light ways that make me think we that saw, off page they're more intimate. Pretty sure we saw Zane kiss Vin before we saw Ellen. No, they've kissed. They have? Okay, yeah. okay. I was like, oh, I actually can't remember. Arzu says nerdy Arzu. has to come from me. I shared it. That's dirty. That's wrong. <laughs> Arzu, thank you for welcome back to the nerd table. <laughs> That's uh, so wrong, Arzu. Good. No, it's a good article. It's a good article. <laughs> Um, uh, Judah Kanazaris, uh, thank you for that super chat. Vin purposely you. put boundaries in between books because she wasn't ready until they were married. At least that's how I read it. I agree with that. Sure, I'm just saying that Brandon Sanderson was like, I mean, yeah, I thought they were having sex. Mm-hmm. Um, so. And Bryce says, writing sex can be super difficult. It's difficult to judge. Honestly, I prefer people just not include it at all rather than include it bad or awkwardly. I'm, I'm not saying that I want sex to be in the book. I'm not looking for Miss Bourne to be smutty. I'm saying that because this book only and and the previous book this series thus far has only written sex as being a weapon that i don't know what this culture's feeling is about sex when it isn't that Mm -hmm. i have no idea if anybody in this world ever has sex for a good reason because every single example we have is negative even breeze and all like that even that which is fucked and but no i don't even know no, i'm saying even that i feel really weird about them but yeah the, it's, it's pretty weird it's pretty weird there's just no reference to sexuality between any characters even married characters who will have kids yeah they don't even like kind of like pull each other close and yeah. they're like like it's yeah it feels very like hug or like it feels jane austeny in a way that makes me think that they don't have sex before marriage unless they're being raped or they are raping mm-hmm. which is wild like we know that we know that ellen has had sex but his only sexual experience is one of the most traumatizing experiences of his life true yeah right so i yeah i don't know yeah me Monk says they don't even sleep in the same bed. They don't even sleep in the same, like, Yeah, okay, but that's because wing of the Vin house. is literally awake all night, and Ellen has to sleep at some point, and Vin doesn't have to. Like, that is that is practical. That That's not anything to do with sex. I don't know. I don't know that Ellen and Vin have different sleep schedules. He, Ellen he is literally, like... He always seems to be awake in the middle of the night. No, Vin gets, like, two or three hours of sleep oh, a night. Oh, he sleeps less than her. But I don't think that it's, like, a nighttime-daytime issue. I think that... Also, I think that Burning Pewter, uh, Vin could easily get out of bed without waking Ellen. Vin literally, like, watches him while he sleeps and protects him. Yeah. That's what I do to you. 
I just creep on the windowsill and stare in at All you. All right, Edward Cullen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I I guess it is. I just it, in my mind they were just doing it, but like we weren't talking about it. So yeah, yeah and 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 honestly, that that is a possibility. I'm not saying that you're wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that the book doesn't do anything to convince me that anyone has a sexual relationship. Yeah, no, I, I don't know that. if Ham is fucking his wife. You know what he I mean? He has children. Oh, he has had sex with her. <laughs> I'm just saying that like there's no. And, and part of it is that almost the entire cast of the book is male and there's no gay romance, right? So because there are so few women, it is hard to tell a story. And the right. only the only healthy romance we get in this novel, because Vin doesn't get any healthy romance. Her shit is fucked. We're going to talk about it today. But the only healthy romance in this is in the most fucked up way. Says <coughs> that in Tindwell. And they're not fucking. No. No, they're not. So, like, She's I, like, I've had enough of that. <laughs> I like, yeah. It's just, it is an interesting book from the perspective of the world building is so violent and and in ter- in in the direction of telling the story of the final this empire. Story literally has breeding programs. Oh so, yeah, it's awful. yeah. It's yeah. Also, um, I know that I've said negative stuff about Tindwell in the past. I know that I've been critical of Tindwell. Never saying a negative thing about Tindwell ever again. Uh, you won't catch me doing that shit, okay? I'm proud of you. I know. It doesn't mean that I'm not thinking it, but I will not say it out loud. Um, what? She's mean. But she's been through a lot, You so. are romancing Lazel in Baldur's Gate. You're like, I like it when she's mean to me. Lazel is brash, but she's not mean. She's a dick. No, she is scared, and I'm going to save her. She's in a fucking cage, and you're like, oh, like, uh, let me help you. And she's like, get me down from here right now. And you're like, okay, well, why yeah, are she's you like in that? a cage. If you were in a cage and you yell at me, get me down from here right I now. I would say, please get me down. No, no, no. I, yes, you I would. Can, you can say whatever you want. I'm getting you out of that goddamn cage. Oh, my I'm God. Not, I am not judging a gif Yankee woman who is so wonderful to me at times for the outburst She's that she has never while been a nice. fucking tadpole never. is wiggling around inside of her no. head, okay? I no. do not judge for that. Mm-hmm. Lazelle, I, I adore you, and uh, you're my favorite. Um, and Karlak's also great. And also <laughs> yeah, Gale but Karlak and... is so nice to you. Karlak is the best, okay? Yeah, but Karlak is only so nice to you because she's so thirsty because it's been so long since anyone has touched her. Oh my like, God. Karlak is she's literally nice like, to you, even I'm... when you don't romance her, okay? Karlak is like, I just want someone to hug me. Karlak is just as broken as Lazelle. It just comes out in a different form of toxicity. No, Karlak Toxic is like the over happy... kindness. She like will like yes. dance around and yes. she just like finds joy in life. Toxic. What? All right, you heard it here. Finding joy in life is toxic. No, no, no. It, toxic. It, it's not. It's not that it's toxic. It is that it is. Um, how I'm trying to bring this back to Miss Bourne. Uh, it is like Vin looking at Zane, right? Where she has been conditioned by her relationship with her brother and by the, her relationship with the world to be more interested in the idea of a partner rather than looking at her actual partner and what she actually gets out of that relationship, right? Karlak is obsessed with the idea of having a partner because she has been so lonely physically for so long. I think that in order for a relationship with Karlak mm-hmm. to work out, mm-hmm. you're going to have that initial, I my fire's down, we can touch now. I think that a year into that relationship, Karlak's going to be like, hey, I need some time to figure me out. I need to see a therapist. I need to make sure that the reasons that I'm with you are not just because you saved me from something, but because I actually need to be in this. And I think that that is valid and that Carlac should take that time. And if you disagree with that... But I don't think that that is toxic... No, no, toxic's the wrong word. I think that it is... Yeah, it is. But but, but it is... There, there, there is, are plenty of people who can have relationships and find the joy in life, but also have some trauma... <laughs> That they need to go to therapy and work through. But love bombing is toxic. And that can come about as a symptom of a lack. But what this do you this mean, is a okay. real thing, What right? do you mean by love bombing? Because people have different ideas of what that is. You spend like three hours with Carlac and she's like, oh my god, sugar. You and me, babe, ride or die. Carlac ride or dies for you so fast. 
that he, and it's because she's like I just want I just want to touch I, I want to she's like I think you're hot and you're really good at what you Arzu, do Arzu thank you for five gifted subs I promise we will talk about Miss Porn again Arzu, soon Arzu thank you for the membership. I promise you we will talk about Miss Porn soon no Carla Carla is into you in the same way that like every single other character will be into you if you like do the right things like if you if you Carla disapproves if you do stuff that she doesn't like Carla will not romance you. I know people who play Baldur's Gate and they're like I want Carla to romance me and she never has. Yeah, because they're evil. Not even necessarily evil. Sure. My point is that Carla's desire for romance uh-huh. comes from a lack that you did not create as a character. You are filling a hole that she has come to desire over a over a decade but she just won't feel that no matter what kind of person you are she likes you based on who you are as a character as a person whatever it is sure if if Carlac was the kind of character who no matter what choices you made whatever you did if you express interest in her and she like sure and she you know fucking jumped you no matter what you did said or whatever I would agree with you but I think you're wrong I think that we're both right. I think that you're viewing it as two separate things, whereas you're making an argument that Carlac is into you because she likes you, and that's true. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that Carlac is not in a position to be committing as heavily as quickly as she does because there is a level of trauma there that is creating the like ecosystem for her feelings to balloon that fast. I mean, we are all formed by our own lived experiences. Yes, and some of those lived experiences create a level of, um, cause us to overcommit to relationships quickly because of a lack of relationship in the past, right? Carlac, having been sequestered away from physical touch for so long, it, this is such a long, this is not about Mistborn at all. <laughs> Samantha, thank you for that super chat. My husband liked romancing Lazelle too. It made me wonder if he needs therapy. Yeah, I'm wondering that as well. Because Lazelle is the one that will fuck you immediately no matter what. What's wrong with that? <laughs> She, she's not in love. She's not in love with you. Lazelle's like, you're hot. Your pheromones and smell good, and I want to fuck you. I can appreciate that. <laughs> you smell nice. I have had far Let's too many sex. one night stands in my life to judge Lazelle for having a one night stand. Uh, I'm not far enough to I, know. I, I like have how that less. Goes. I have lower boundaries than Lazelle. Lazelle is like, I have watched you for these last three days murdering things to save me. You've you've like literally risked your life for me multiple your times. Turns me on. Let's fuck. Whereas I'm like, hey, I saw you on Tinder. Do you want to come over? Um, like my bar is so much lower than Lazelle's that for me to judge Lazelle would be insane. Now if Lazelle said like, I'm in love with you, night one, I'd be like, I'm not judging Carlac. There, there's no judgment there. I'm saying that she needs to make sure that she's mentally healthy enough to be in a, a positive relationship for her. Anyways. I'm looking out for Carlac, and you're saying, like, no, love bomb me. Let's forget about your trauma. It's fine. One of us is trying to take care of that Since big red Since when woman. did I say that? That's not even close to what I said. Life Respo, thank you for that super <laughs> chat. Uh, I got here late. Is this book club? I don't know anymore. It is Baldur's Gate Club, apparently. Uh, thank you. Welcome back to the nerd table. If you know Clarus and I, uh, everything comes back to Baldur's Gate now. We got to do our evil run. Okay, so we've talked about one chapter. Yeah, so <laughs> chapter twenty nine and uh, Orsor. Uh, Orsor, wow. Uh, <clears throat> are what? talking about how What's wrong with Orsor? shitty Zane is. We'll get there. Um, I didn't read chapter 47. What happened to Orsor? Yeah, no, that we read it. You can watch that if you're a member or a Patreon patron. Um, <laughs> if you are a Patreon, you could probably also watch that. If you are Patreon, uh, hi. <laughs> you can watch that. Thank you for giving us a platform to uh, survive. Sweet and savory, welcome to the nerd <laughs> table. So about that, well. Oh God. Um, how about how about them cowboys? Vin um, is like, I know what the deepness is, and that's basically it. And we're I like, know oh. what the deepness is. All right. Yeah. Um, so Sezed is, uh, doing his scholarly chapter 30. duty. Yes. Yeah. Next chapter. Doing his scholarly duty. Um, and, and Vin shows up and they talk about what the deepness is. And, and Vin is like, it's the mist. And Sezed's like, yeah, people thought that before and they're wrong. And she's like, okay, but what if they're right though? Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of have this like fun debate. Yeah. About it, you know, and and says it's kind of like, oh shit, oh shit. I think maybe I'm being convinced, um, and is like, I need to figure this out. 
I, I do love though that she's like, why are you arguing with me? And he's like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I just. I'm. This is. This is how like. This is how research happens. Scholarly conversations happen. We don't just assume shit. Shit. And she's like, Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm assuming shit. I'm right. Yeah. And he's like, All right, mistress, whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, Oh, you could never, never be a keeper. Um, but thank God for it because it makes it so much easier uh, to convince her to leave later. When Say said fucking is yep. a liar. Thank goodness. Yeah, Say said a dirty, liar. Dirty liar. Yeah, but Vin is like the mists are the deepness yeah. because if the mists are there in the daytime, like it kills everything. Like obviously the mists are like attacking people, one, but also, you know, no food, no sunlight, none of yeah. that. Like it's bad. I didn't it's think bad. about that at all in book one, but it makes so. I was like, oh, the deepness is attacking things. But the idea of the deepness as a force that would essentially just stop life from being possible is yeah. so fascinating. Right. Especially because the interesting thing about the mist is that it would be water, right? So you would essentially have half of what you need to live, which would be water everywhere, but that water is blocking the other half of what you need, which is sunlight. Yeah. And so you end up in sort of a weird, like, I don't know, you would have to like, I, there's nothing you could do. Like literally there's nothing you could do. That amount of fog would just kill off any ecological system and yeah, it's so scary because there's no there's no recourse, especially without technology, right? Yeah. Nowadays, you know, I don't know, we'd build giant fans or something. <laughs> we'd figure something out, but maybe we wouldn't. We might just die. We're headed that way. Uh, anyway, uh, this is also where we learned that Tendwill, um, no jokes. Okay, serious time. I'm putting a barrier between that joke and this because it's sure. serious time. Uh, Tendwill was a uh, breeding mother in a breeding program yeah. under the Final Empire. Yeah, and has had over 20 children. So you know what, Tindwell, I'm sorry that I said mean things about you. Uh, you are doing your best, and mm-hmm. that sucks. This was hard to read. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. She's got like 20 kids. Don't yeah. know where any of them are. Do yeah. you think we'll meet Tindwell's kids? Um, probably not. Well, actually, they're going in terror. I don't know. I don't know either, because I could see them being main characters of Mistborn Era 2, well, depending on like the, how the, how much time between eras. And the point of her being in the breeding program was that her kids might be keepers. Yeah. Might be ferrochemists. So I think it's possible, actually. Well, and I think what's so fascinating about it, the, the, uh, one of the things that Brandon Sanderson, I think, does really well is that he brings up these topics that... I bristle at, honestly, you know, that are not, not that I like that he shouldn't write them, just that, that you know, tough. they're tough. W- when we were going through Wheel of Time, I kept being frustrated with that franchise because of how it would take these sensitive topics and not really do anything with them except use them as window dressing, right? Like, I think that the Duck of All are using slavery as window dressing in a way that is just bad. I, I think it is bad writing. I think it is a, I think that it is a waste of an opportunity to say something about the Sanchen that is never used and is just fucking, you know, curtains. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that slavery should ever be curtains. If you're going to use that in your story, I think that you have to use it to say something. And mm-hmm. there has to be a reason why it's there beyond just look at how bad these bad people are. Oh, they're the heroes. Anyway, um, so yeah. I think that you having this conversation about Tindwell's being placed within this breeding program and why the Senate, um, which, yes, every time I read that it was the Senate, I giggled because I just pictured Palpatine telling Tindwell that she had to do it. It was very weird um, in my head. Um, <laughs> Not right. I am the Senate. Jesus. Tindwell says that I'm kicking you out <sighs> for being obstinate. Uh, and so Tindwell gets, I, sh- I said no jokes in this section, Tindwell is placed there because she's a ferrochemist and so they're hiding her ferrochemy from the Lord Ruler so that they can ensure that future terrorists have ferrochemy, which is such a like dark and like bleak idea. Yeah, but they're like, you have to go and just be a baby machine for 30 years. And she's like, all right, I guess I gotta do it. Um, uh, but for the, the, for this book, like, It is about these people trying to keep their culture moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. And Tindwell's fight is a fight to keep and preserve her culture within her bloodline. And I think that there's something so beautiful about that that is so dark, especially in the part later where she's talking about how she went back to the Keepers 
and realized they weren't doing anything in all of those years that she was putting up with this for her people. Yeah. And I, I just think, like, the... Uh, Seizet is the only one who's yeah. ever actually tried to, like, make a difference and not just to survive. Yeah. 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 That, it, that, that was tough. That, that, was, that was, like, hard to, to read. Mm-hmm. It's like... She's, uh, she's had it rough. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Like, I'm, yeah. Literally, like, can't imagine. She's just been locked in a room for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Yep, but she did what she felt was her duty, and because of her, hopefully, like, you know, Pharaoh Kimi doesn't die out, and, like, that's, like, a I can't imagine that kind of, like, sacrifice, and I can't imagine, like, tr- I hope we kind of get something from her perspective mm-hmm. truly about how she feels. We got a little bit, right? Because she yeah. goes to say that, and you're like, you're the only fucking person who bothered to to actually make a difference and do anything and everyone yeah, else just sat on their fucking asses like like I can't I uh, that that's a feeling that I c- cannot imagine is like I dedicate 30 years of my life to trying to help like my people society whatever it is mm-hmm. and I come back and all of them are just fucking twiddling their thumbs you know <laughs> so yeah yeah that was rough yeah it's tough yeah but, like, I, I appreciated the way that it's written. I, I think that it... I, and I think that we get... Because we get it from her perspective, right? I think that one of my problems in Wheel of Time with the sl- way slavery was used is that it is almost exclusively from the slaver's point of view. Yeah. Or from an outsider who is maybe mildly critical of it, but never, like... There's never, like, a full-throated criticism of it, really, right? Um... Except with Egwene, because she was uh, the main. <laughs> Not even her, right? No, she fucking tells. She tells. She does nothing about it. She has no. one conversation where she's like, "That's bad," but I'm not going to do anything about it. And then she doesn't, uh, because she because ran. It, that, because we, let's not talk about it. That's, that's spoilers. War, that's spoilers. Yeah, that's spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that's fair. I. Yeah. It is always a perspective of privileged people in that book. Mm-hmm. And because we get so much of this from Sezed and from Tindwill, it completely changes how it is written and how I feel about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I get that. Yeah. Um, we go over to the uh, to the assembly. We get uh, Phylon's perspective. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Um yeah, and he's just like... We live time spoilers. I'm Everyone take a drink. Those were light spoilers. Those were light spoilers, kind of. Maybe. We'll uh, see. Sure. Yeah, that was my bad. It kind of was like going to go in there. And everything then... everything that we just talked about is mostly in season two. So it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. drunk. Uh, <laughs> drink. It's noon. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's six minutes to noon. Uh <laughs> Yeah, um, so Phylon is essentially a merchant dude who, um, I don't know. Phylon, like, Phylon's I'm a little fucking... Better than everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he sucks. Anyways, um, and <laughs> we are kind of privy to the fact that he's plotting something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they do the, so they get to the assembly. Um, Ellen is like, okay, so have y'all picked somebody to, uh, you know, be the... Chancellor or whatever it is, like you it's, guys have a plan, right? You guys, you guys have a plan. It is hilarious because Ellen walks in and is like, "Hey, did, have you guys followed the rules?" And everyone is just like, "Ellen, none of us. You're the only person who knows what the fuck. It, can you just tell us what to do?" They're written down. They could have read them. I'm just saying. Oh, these people are bad at their jobs. They've had a lot going on. It's been a year. Yeah, and this has not been the oppressing thing they've had to read in the last year. They've been passing read the laws. laws. For a year. <laughs> no, it's it. You know, if you're usually... going to be a politician. You should know the law. I crazy, crazy take. I have bad news for you. Trust me, I know. Uh... Uh, but no, I the having a system where the deposed monarch is the only one who knows how the monarchy works is such an insanely bad system. No, I love like, it. Like there needs a they need a court scribe. Like Ellen forgot to make a position. Because every government has this, right? There is somebody in almost every government I know of whose job it is to just keep the rules. That That is their whole job. They don't make rules, and they don't enforce rules, and they don't, like, 
they're not a part of the assembly. Their job is to be the reference point from an outside perspective. So they need a terrorist. They need a keeper. No, anybody so can like do this job. The laws. They just need they just need anyone who can do the job. Anyone who can read, I guess. They're like, yes. ah yes, these are the laws. You're Ellen wrong. Ellen's failing in this is that he created a monarchy with an assembly, but the monarch is a member of the assembly, and there is nobody outside of those 24 people who interacts with this body but doesn't have power within it. And that means that there is no one to be a check on Ellen's power. And the only reason Ellen is not king is because Ellen is such a fucking good guy that he's like, yeah, all the Scott can die. It's fine. But no, wasn't there a guy who, like, later on when Ellen lies, he, like, makes eyes at the one guy. Who yeah, knows and that guy law. is absolutely willing to lie for Ellen. A thousand percent. Fair. He's like, ride or die, because Fair. I don't want the Scott to be slaves again. And Ellen is like, yeah, but, but integrity. my integrity. Yeah. And I'm like, dude... Is there integrity in allowing a population to be enslaved again? I don't know. I don't know that I agree with them. Well, here, the, the, the lengths that I would go to stop being from pe- people from being enslaved mm-hmm. far outweigh a lie. <laughs> the heinous and awful things, the black marks that I would put on my soul to end slavery, if I could, but they- go so far beyond a lie about procedure in a uh, electoral debate i i i don't know i as soon as I, I, I look as soon as you compromise in in that way it is a slippery slope that we see all the time with politicians i i agree with you 100 percent agree with you mm-hmm. very slippery slope the other side of the slope is slavery for the majority of the population. The, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, yes, absolutely slippery slope. But if you if you peek behind the curtain a little bit, it's slavery. <laughs> like Straff wants to enslave everybody again. Yeah. Straff is uh, Straff is a bad bad man. Uh huh. And all Ellen had to be was like, ah, sorry, you can't change your votes. It's tough because if a revolution is built on like lies and deceit, then it, like you're in you're again going to get another like terrible, horrible, exploitative system. Mm-hmm. And I think that Ellen just wants to give the Scott the the best fighting chance that he he can. And I think that As, if he compromises on, like, like if mm-hmm. he, you know, lies and schemes and plots to, like, become in charge, he is betraying their trust in a way because they're the one who made him king in the first place. They trusted him to make rules, you know? Mm-hmm. They, they trusted him to put into place this, like, system that would, uh, like, be fair and honest and just. And Ellen is an idealist, and I, 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 I get it. I really do. On so on the other side of that, uh-huh. right? The only reason he's losing this vote is because there is corrupt bribery going on. So, what? So basically, what you're saying is that the only way for Ellen to win is if he plays fair and the other side fails at playing unfairly. Because nobody else is playing fair. Ellen is the only person in all of this that is even trying to play fair. And so, of course, he's fucking losing. Nobody else is following the rules. He's the only one following the rules. And so if you're the only one following the rules and you following the rules and being the only one to do that leads to the entire population being enslaved, I don't know that you following the rules was ever honorable. I think that you are... He's in front of all the ska. Like, uh, the ska are, like, watching this happen. And if you're trying to, like, be the champion of, like, these people who, like... Don't don't know how to like. Oh, Ellen is not being a champion for them. Ellen is doing nothing for the Scott here. Ellen is doing this for himself. It is an entirely selfish point of view. There is nothing there. It, you can't. No, he's like I can't be a good leader to people if I'm just fucking lying to get there. Okay, but he's There's not. A reason being, that this dude... is not. This is not about being a leader or not. He's not leading anybody here. Ellen is making a choice between giving the Scott a fighting chance mm-hmm. and having a slight ding on his own integrity or giving them no opportunities or freedom at all. He's making... The only person who takes a hit here is Ellen. It is an entirely selfish point of view. 
If Ellen was if Ellen was working in the best interest of everybody else and not about himself and how he feels about how he views himself, he would tell a little white lie to save them all from Straff Venture. But then he's a cheater just like everyone else. Yes. A hundred percent. And the population isn't enslaved. I don't know. I think that like breaking people's trust like that is something that's hard to come back from. So is slavery, but one of them is significantly worse than the other. Sure, but Ellen, Ellen is Ellen believes he can still make a difference, right? Like he's still trying, he's still doing his best. He's like, look, even if I'm not king, like he's like going around and like trying to help the like, you know, stop the poisoning from happening or making sure that the Scott are all warm by like moving them into the buildings that are better situated for that kind, like for the winter and that kind of stuff, like. He's still, like, doing his best. He just doesn't want to, like, he just think. I, I, and, and I get this idea of, like, if I have to be a bad person to be the leader, then, like, I don't deserve that. And then the people who are, who are bad people and who are fucking around to become the leader, they also don't deserve that. You know, the Ska had the Lord Ruler for a thousand years. Yeah. They deserve better. Yes. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, Judah, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Ellen, this book, basically, good idea is bad timing. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And I, I think what this book is, is it really is the, like, mess that happens after, you know, a thousand years of this, like, awful system. Mm -hmm. You cannot just very neat and cleanly push it off and put in something new like like the the revolutionary transition period out of that kind of thing is also sometimes maybe just as bad yeah, and like that 100%. that sucks and ellen is just trying to like be a good person through that and not let the fact that it sucks make him into a worse person yes a hundred percent i agree with you mm -hmm. that is a hundred percent true it is also inherently selfish Right? Like, b both of those things can be true. You can be, uh, you can say, like, I have to remain pure or else everybody else will suffer. But it doesn't but seem like But by remaining pure, him. everybody else will suffer. It doesn't Who seem else like... could it be for? He's like the leader, the, the Scott is a leader who's not going to fucking lie to them. Okay, but so he's I'm not, not the liar. leader. No, but so he wants to be. Okay, but, but, right, but he's not. And he's not going to be. He doesn't have the votes. Right? You yes, the, I understand your argument that like that are, he believes that the Ska deserve a leader who is pure, mm -hmm. right? But if purity cannot get you to be the leader, then by preserving your own purity because of your ideal about what a leader should be, you are being selfish about your ideal, but he, not he thinks, what the community at large. He needs. thinks highly of Penrod. There's a reason that he makes him like the chancellor. Right? Like, yeah, he's, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. he's like, okay, well, if it's not me, then they're going to vote. Like, Penrod is, is going to win. And so I guess, uh, you know, he's. I, I think he's like, I'm not going to lie to stop who I believe would be a good candidate and a good leader. Like, I'm not I'm not going to lie to stop them from getting it just so that I can have it selfishly myself. I think that... I think that that is a very fair point of view. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, I, I, I think, yeah. I, I think that if Ellen, like, it, here's the thing. If, if... If Set was going to win, I think maybe that situation feels different. But, like, Penrod, he likes him. He, yeah. he thinks that maybe he's a little milk toast, but, like, not like that he's going to mistreat people. And I think that's what Ellen cares about first and foremost. Yeah, and that's why, that's where Ellen is naive, right? And uh, Ellen, uh, interestingly, yeah. like, he he's a very interesting character. I enjoy Ellen a lot. Yeah. I also think that he is a child, and he and everyone keeps telling him that, and he doesn't. He's not really paying attention, because if he was paying attention, I think that he would do. And and this is what this whole section is about, right? Like Ellen is going around being like, "Oh, I ignored them, and so I fucked up." Oh, the assembly. And Ellen. Yeah. Ellen. Yeah. Is May, in, powerful men don't like to be ignored. Well, and but. It's not even that they don't like to be ignored. Ellen could have seen the writing on the wall if he'd just been paying attention the whole time, and he wasn't, right? Ellen was so busy worrying about his purity and the, like, w and the quality of the laws that he writes 
that he doesn't take time to look around and see what the effect of his actions are. And it's it's unfortunate because I think that like he he squanders a really good shot. Mm-hmm. And and I'm sure he gets another one. Like I think this that's where this book goes or or the next book. But yeah, we'll have to see. He squandered this really good shot by not paying attention to the world around him. I'm not throwing away my. But he shot. did. He threw away his shot. Yeah. Right. And it's it's partially in his like um, striving for that purity that he throws it away. Yeah, I guess it's it's not. I I think that it's more naivety than naivete than than selfishness. You're like, oh, he didn't lie because he's selfish, but like he didn't know what the outcome of that lie would be. I don't think that selfishness is very often an intention. I think that selfishness is very often a byproduct of something else. In this case, his selfishness is a byproduct of his naivete. Right? I don't think. That, I don't think. I, I, don't I don't think that, that selfish is a. Um. I, I don't believe that selfish is an adjective that you can put on an action, right? Like, I don't think that people can be like, I did this thing selfishly. I think that people do things for whatever reason they do them for. And that the end result is that it was either selfish or not based on their worldview. Mm, I, I don't believe that. And so I, I, I think that Ellen ends up being very selfish in a lot of this because of the way in which he views the world, not because I think that he is, like, trying to be selfish. I think that he okay. thinks of himself as being very selfless, right? Mm-hmm. I think that he his view of himself is that he is doing everything for other people. Uh-huh. And I think that in some ways that a lot of his actions are true in that way, but I also think that the way that he views how he needs to be is inherently selfish, and he doesn't realize that because he's too naive to. Okay. Yeah, and I think I, that ten years from now, Ellen would not behave the same way. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with you, but that that's interesting. Uh, Arzu, thank you for that super chat. Um, thank a you, Arzu. constitutional monarchy or similar only works when the population is educated enough to back you up. He chose this too soon. They need a regular monarchy or similar first. <laughs> I don't know that anyone ever needs a monarchy. Um, I do appreciate the super chat. A system. A system. I'm not a big fan of kings, but um, I do understand where you're coming from. I also think that you. I love that you can like Super Chats now. That's so fun. Oh, can you? Yeah, look. Oh. It's got likes on it. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's so fun. I dig that. YouTube putting in some cool shit, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely... I also think that Ellen is just dumb for having a political assembly that he has no allies in. I, I, I find that to be uh, just such a massive like overlooking of his year as king. The fact that he is he doesn't seem to have done any work to have built up his base of power within the assembly seems yeah. like because he's so irresponsible. Because he spent a whole year like writing the laws because not a single other person has any kind of experience or knowledge to do something like that. Ellen just doesn't, and and I think that it's partially just the way the book is written. But Ellen doesn't seem to have relationships with anyone except like Jastis, who is gone. Well, with any, but but. Yeah, and it's that is a little bit weird and to me obviously. because he, at least the noblemen he should know. A lot of them fled. No, right, but there's eight noblemen on the assembly, and he is the son of the most powerful noble of the last, That's you why know, he knows his Penhal. whole life. Sure, 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 but he should know all of them, and the fact that there's... We, the fact that we don't get any real relationship between him and the other nobles is a really interesting choice in the writing mm-hmm. because there are characters that should have known Ellen his whole life. Like, it, it, I I found it... I was expecting more between him and the other nobles hmm. just because of their past relationships. I was expecting Ellen to kind of, like, play on that a little bit, maybe, like, lean on them because of their familiarity with him. And he just kind of goes to the Scott immediately. And it says a lot about Ellen that he is not... He doesn't seem to be very willing to work with the nobles on this, even though... Well, yeah, because he's watched them fucking murder and rape Ska his whole life. Like He still put them in power. So, like, you know, I, I think, again, like, it's a selfish thing on his part where he he's like, oh, I'm going to give you power, but on my terms. And I'm not going to engage with you beyond that because I, I don't... But I don't think it's selfish because he's like, no, we're going to have eight of the merchants, eight of the Ska, and eight of the nobles. I, I don't... That's not selfish at all. That is taking the parts of the 
community around you mm-hmm. and trying to give equal representation to all of them. Because that's what he believes the right system is. Yeah, because that's what he's but like. But how he behaves once he about. has that system and how he interacts with that system, he doesn't use it to build up a base of power around his ideas, right? He puts that yeah, system in place because he's, he's like, laws. that's. No, no, 100%. 100%. But you can use the writing of laws to build up your base of power. You can, like, you can, he's, he doesn't, he does the, like, intellectual work of politics yeah. without doing any politicking. Well, no, because he doesn't have, like, the character in book one does not have the charisma or the relationships to be that person. And I think that that's part of what Tindwell is, like, working on. Not only a persona, but, like, like he realizes, like you said, that he's ignored the assembly this whole time. Yeah. And and now they're like, oh well, like fuck that guy, and like that that is definitely like a failing of his. But I yeah, don't, 100%. I don't see it as selfish. I, I like that it's an oversight. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Judah. Thank you for the super chat. Ellen was always bad at fostering political relationships. This was set up in Final Empire. He had a good heart, but not the equipment. For the era. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. He's he's good He's the at, wrong person to be king. He's good at what he's good at, but being a leader is different. You know, the people who write the laws. People literally have to teach him how to, to be a leader. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, and hey, he's, 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 he's <laughs> doing his best. <laughs> like, he's, he's really trying hard. Um, but obviously, like, he's just read a lot of theory. And yeah. Tindwill is the one who's able to actually teach him about people that, like, existed. Like, I don't know how many actual history books he got right I feel like he's only read stuff from the last thousand years before a thousand years the yeah. lord ruler was like nah burn all that shit right yeah it's just interesting it's um it's sad for so many people that ellen is as bad at this as he is you he's know what i mean better he's getting better he's learning sure unfortunately the the people of luthadel don't have that time sure and so like ellen's friends are going to die because of his inability to tell one lie, and that is a, just an that's an that's a very tragic thing, right? Like that when when whatever happens in Luthadel happens while they're away at the Well of Ascension, mm-hmm. and Ellen's friends are dying, it is going to at least partially be because of the system that he put in place. And that and and his unwillingness to bend at you all. You keep saying for that because system. of this lie, and I think that he believes Penrod would have been a good choice. Sure. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he maybe he believes that, but it's I don't know that he's going to view it that way when hindsight his is are dead. twenty twenty. You know what I mean? Like hindsight is painful. Sure. Yeah, he looks back and is like, "Oh wait, Penrod was like corrupt and working for my dad. I didn't know that when I was like, yeah, like he'll be the next king or whatever." And yeah. that's it. No, no, no. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. No. But he. Yeah. I don't know that he's going to care as much about that as. Well. Yeah. Anyway, um, where are we? Oh, uh, we're in the third chapter. Yeah. We Oh, it's been an hour and 12 minutes. Ellen gives a speech. But guys, this book is really good, and there's a lot to talk about. I w- Clearly, right? We're having very deep political discussions. I oh, think... I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so sorry that this is moving slowly. Um, so uh, Phylon introduces Set, and Set is in the city. Um, it's insane. Surprise! He I just don't shows know why up, they don't just murder him immediately. Just cast off his cloak. Because it's not that trying to make a world that doesn't work like that. Anyways, he's right. got like right, right, right. 20, Sorry, it's only okay guards. to send Vin to kill people sometimes. They never send Vin to kill people. That is the whole point. Sorry, right, right, right. It's only okay to use Vin as a threat to kill people. Yes, yeah. very different. Yeah, like, incredibly it? different. I don't know that Vin feels that way. Absolutely different. Well, she does now. Um, she's like, oh, wait, I realize that, uh, yep, no, Zane is a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Set is there in the city, snuck in, and it's like, I'm here to take over. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, fuck. Um, so, like, okay, well, these are the nominees for King. It's going to mm-hmm. be me, it's going to be Penrod, it's going to be Set. And, uh, well, you know, we're going to vote. You're going to have a chance to uh, bribe people. Set is like, everyone come to my keep for dinner and I will give you money so that I may have this city. And I was like, wow, subtle. Uh, it is. It's the subtle art of not giving a fuck. 
Pretty much. I appreciate that. I honestly was kind of like, I kind of want Set to win just to see what he does against Strav. I wanted... Okay, so the, the, the disappointing thing about how this plays out is that I really wanted to see Ellen, Set, and Straff at a table together, and I thought that's where this was headed. Uh, um, yeah. No. And the fact that we never got that negotiation is sad to me because I was like, oh, fuck. Set versus Straff with Ellen trying to ping pong in between them would be fucking hilarious. And it just never happened. Sure. I was kind of, I was hoping we'd get like a, like, we ride out to parlay in the middle of the field kind of scene. So two slavers versus one idealist. I said, I oh, don't know that oh, Seth's a slaver. Oh, Ellen literally asks. Oh, like, no, that's right. Yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah, I do worse shit than the Lord Ruler did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, mind, yeah never mind. Yeah, Seth's like, oh, no, they're going to be slaves again. Right, they right, should right, be right. in their place. And I was like, yikes. Yeah, no, I was thinking about something else, and you're you're a thousand percent right. Yeah, yeah. No. Set, no, Set's not a good person. I'm no. not. I'm not saying that like I wanted Set to be king because I thought that it would be good for people. You thought it'd be interesting. To I thought see it'd what be happens. interesting storytelling to have Set versus Straff. Yeah, 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 I hear you. I hear you. And Ellen trying to like because I didn't think I don't know. I don't know what I was. I don't know where I thought this was going. It does not go where I thought it was going. So I have no idea what's happening. That's how but. I felt about book one. I was like so sure where things were headed. And that's why in this book I'm like, I don't fucking know. I'm just along for the ride. Um, Austin says now Nerdy is rooting for the slave owners. Only in the middle of the book. But for them to be dead by the end of the book, Austin. I'm not, I'm not them rooting for them. Put them in power and then kill them. Yes, it is, it is. <laughs> I'm not rooting for them in that I want them to be in power at the end of the book. I'm rooting for them in that I want them to be in power at the dark night of the soul moment for our heroes. So that when they overcome it by the end of the book, it's fucking rad. Do you uh-huh. know what I mean? I want, I want the bad guys to win three quarters of the way through the book. So they get their comeuppance. Yes. You know what I mean? Or or like more like more like two thirds. Sure, sure, sure. So that, you know, we to, to give a little we bit of resolution, resolution at the end of the book. I hate Absolutely. when a book ends on the climax and then is like, find out what happens in the resolution next time, Wheel of Time. Um God damn it. Yeah. Yeah, we need aftercare in a series, okay? Nothing nothing will piss me off more than if I have to read like thirteen books. Uh, to get to a book where main characters actually are in danger um, in the 14th book. Like, nothing will drive me crazier for two years As we wait. than if the heroes always win. Because that's fucking exhausting. Uh, and I don't like it. I love that for you. Uh, Ancient Hydra, thank you so much for that super Hydra, chat. Hydra, thank you. Um, my first live book club in a while, so I'm so excited you're reading another of my favorite series. I love seeing your takes and will be avidly following. Well, thank you, Hydra. It's been a fun ride. It's yeah, been a fun ride. We're we've talked it. about three chapters <laughs> Maybe four. Uh, Set gives a speech. Is like, fuck you, I'm taking over because I actually know what I'm doing. And that's pretty much it. Which is just not true. Yeah. So he gets to go and stay in one of the keeps. He's like, I'm going to bring 5,000 soldiers to make me feel comfortable. And they're like, uh, no, 1,000. Yeah. And then we find out that Set named his son... Njordin. I... Njordin. Here's... Okay. Okay. Brandon Sanderson. I stared at this name for 15 minutes. I stopped reading your book and went, am I having the most dyslexic moment of my life? I wrote this on a piece of paper to make sure that my brain was functioning properly because you spelled this poor boy's name G-N-E-O-R-N-D-I-N. What the fuck? I was like, is it just George and I'm losing my fucking mind? <laughs> it's George now. No, it's Njordan. 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 Like, it sounds, Njordan. it sounds like Set was in the other room while his wife was giving birth and transcribed one of the weird noises she made while her son was, like, ripping out of her vagina. Like, Njordan is a fucking... Njordan didn't... It's something. It's fucking insane. Yeah. It's Jordan. Like Jordan, I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ember says I did not remember the same. I took one look at it and thought, "Oh dear, poor nerdy." <laughs> it's rough. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh. This rough. name alone makes me want to go to audiobooks. Except I'm so fucking mad at Spotify right now. But oh no, why? Spotify basically, if you put an audiobook on Spotify, they basically own the audiobook oh. and their new policies are insane and i am just like the and i don't even listen to audiobooks on spotify but i'm so yeah. 
so deeply upset about the language that they're using in order to scrape um, book narrators' voices for AI. And the problem is that it isn't the book narrator who's giving the permission. It is the person who is distributing the audiobook. So these audiobook voices oh are God. just voicing a book. That book then gets put on Spotify, and then Spotify is then scraping their voice without their permission. I fucking hate AI. Yeah. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Uh, Ancient Hydra, thank you so much for that super chat. Also, I love your book club because of the tangents. I like other <laughs> cleaner you. podcasts, but I love that your podcast basically has ADHD. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. That's, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. We go through the chapters in order. We could not be more focused mm -hmm. if we tried. Mm -hmm. uh, Shin, thank you for gifting a membership to yourself. <laughs> 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 I love how that worked out. That was incredible. I love that for you. Shin, that's hilarious. Did you just hit in gift and it just chose it just you? just picked you, I guess. Yeah. That's incredible. Wild. You know what? That that's, is so funny. That is incredible. I've never seen that before. I'm, I'm so happy. for Congratulations. Congratulations, Shin. You are now a member of the NARGs. Uh, thank yourself for that gift, yeah. I guess. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and Bryce says they're on the rails. The rails just aren't straight. Yeah, we're not straight. No, that there's nothing fair. straight in this room. Um... Yeah, so uh, Njarden invites Ellen to dinner, and Ellen is like, no. And he's like, but, like, can't, uh, look, dude, can you just, like, have dinner? And Ellen's like, fine, I'll see you in a week. Pretty much, yeah. Um, Vin is like, am I the hero of ages? Yeah. Huh, interesting. <laughs> She's like, am I the protagonist in the book? <laughs> am I the main character? <laughs> Vin becomes slightly self-aware uh, throughout this book. Uh, that, she's that fourth in a wall novel. cracks yeah. a little bit. Uh, it's great. Um, and she's like a little bit like, hey, prophecies are dumb because they're vague and can mean anything. And I'm like, God, Vin and I would be such good friends. Yeah, Vin gets it. Vin and I would have cute little coffee dates. Absolutely. At three o'clock in the morning because we're both fucking insane insomniacs. Coffee dates? I don't know if there's a coffee shop open at 3 a.m. But I make my own coffee. True. This shit's delicious, okay? That's fair. What time did I come to bed last night? Do you even know? No. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. No, it right. was after 4. I love that for you. Um, I haven't even showered today, and I'm fully awake. That's wild. Couldn't be me. That's crazy. Couldn't be me. Uh, Orsor is like, oh, yeah, Kondra has religion. Um, mm -hmm. The Lord Ruler created us. We call him Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> And, oh my god, uh, yeah. just the, the idea of a dog being like, that is my daddy. <laughs> like mm. this giant wolf man. Um, Yeah, we we uh, get this like, the ongoing relationship of Vin and showing a Chandra her. kindness mm -hmm. for the first time in a Chandra's life. Probably. And it is so fascinating because I bristled so hard when she was like, go get in that dog, Chandra. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, Vin. And then the, the book is just really... Um, the book has really turned that on its head as it goes on. And I think that it's been... I had faith. Uh, I think that, you know, again, like, because we see... Because we get so much perspective from the Contra, and because we... It isn't just about that moment and then they move on. That moment has really had this ripple effect throughout the whole book. I, I think that it is... Um, I think that's really impressive. I, I think that Brian yeah. Sanderson's pulled off something really cool here, and I, I'm really enjoying... The relationship, uh, now that Tensoon is left, I'm sad because I love this character. I know. <laughs> and so I'm really hoping that the Chandra don't execute him or her or them. Uh, and yeah. they can come back because I'm really, this like growing relationship between Chandra and Vin is so cool. And I just, I, I'm going to be so sad if it's just gone. Yeah, I 100% I agree. Uh, uh, Shin, thank you for gifting a membership. To King Me. To not you this time. Thank you for that. King Me. Go watch our audiobook reactions. They're fine. They're, they're a time. Uh, the chapter 47 reaction, worth it. Yeah. We'll get to chapter 47 probably in five hours at this point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Vin and Orser, uh, Tensoon, they go and they start to investigate the crew members. They're trying to figure out who the Chandra spy is. Um, yep. Remember that? They, Remember the spy? We have a really, like, one of my favorite moments in the whole book so far uh, which is a conversation between Doxin and Vin, where Vin pushes Doxin on a conversation in order to try and see if he remembers it. This conversation that they had on the balcony in the Final Empire, where he basically said that all nobles should die, yep. and whether he still believes that. And Doxin is just really. Um, Doxin's 
Jackson is having a, a moment because he was like, yeah. well, here's the thing. If I change my mind on that stance, then I have to face... I have to, to, to come to terms with the fact that I murdered a bunch of people yeah. who maybe didn't deserve to die. Yeah. That's rough, buddy. Uh, hope you figure that one out. Because that sucks. Uh, Judah, thank you for that super chat. Orser and Vin is body horror man and dog trope. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that like this conversation with Dachshund is is just fantastic because it it gets to the heart of the it, it gets to the heart of what I think is my my position on um, the the other side of Ellen's choices, right? Mm -hmm. that, that where you're saying like, well, Ellen would have to bend in a way that is a slippery slope. Dachshund's at the end of that slippery slope, and he's looking back on it with regrets. Mm -hmm. But not regrets for his actions, regrets for what position he was forced into, right? I don't think that Dachshund is looking back saying that he would do anything differently. But he is saying, I had to do a lot of shit that I'm not proud of in order to get to the place that I am proud of, right? I think that Dachshund is very... Um, Dachshund is having a very mature, self-reflective period here of looking at everything that he's done and going, hey, like, th that wasn't great. That was that was bad, objectively bad stuff. Yep. But here we are. And I just, I find it wonderful to read. I thought this conversation between Vin and Dachshund was one of the most mature sections of the book. For sure. One of the most moving sections of the book. It yep. made me really care about Dachshund in also, a way that Dachshund's been rather missing, I think, in this book. Yeah, um, for sure. And so it, it brought him back in a really big, strong way for me and reminded me why I love the character. And it reminds Vin why she loves Dachshund. And, and, you know, it convinces Vin that Dachshund is not the Chandra because of how, um, uh, because of how this goes. I think it's also yeah. interesting that Dachshund goes into it being like, if I start to believe this, I have to judge Kelsier in retrospect. And I don't I think I'm judge ready to my judge dead Kelsier. Best friend. Yeah. yeah. Arzu, thank you for five memberships. Hell yeah, thank You're you. You're so kind to us and today. And Blue, thank you as and well. And Blue. Oh Y'all are popping off today, okay? Is thank it a holiday? Thank Thank you. God Appreciate damn. that. So much green in the chat. Literally only green in the chat, I'm pretty sure. Like... Yeah, and so it's just... It's thank you. The, the, the idea of him being like, I don't want to have to look back and judge Kelsier is so fascinating and I, I, I totally get it. I, I it's, yeah. it's got to be the, the idea of being the surviving friends of a martyr. I, I don't know how you do that. I, I don't know how you go on missing your favorite person and also living in the society that holds them to this pedestal. You know, yeah, it's such a yeah, I, it's it's I, it's an impossible situation. And yep. I think they're all doing their best. Doxon, I don't think he's doing the best at his best. But he's still doing his best, and I can respect that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He lost his best friend, and he's he's lost. He's not over it. He, he like, he's, he is not able to come to terms with it because of, you know, and yeah, because, like you said, because of what it means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this conversation was um, heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Vin follows someone out of the palace and is like, oh, it's Demu. And she's like, like oh, I'm going to go. Suspicious. I'm, I think Demu makes sense for him to be the imposter, for him yeah. to be the conjurer, because we don't know him as well. He came in a little bit later. He's not, like, a best friend. He's just a friend. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, that actually it's makes a lot makes of sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's not the most interesting choice, but, like, I, I could see that. Turns out he's actually just a member of the church. <laughs> well, we don't know that yet. Um, uh, for now, it's chapter 34. We're right. back with Ellen Hammond. Which I can't say without thinking of. I I have to call him Ham because every time I'm like Hammond, I'm like. I'm assuming there's a character named Hammond in Jurassic Park. <laughs> One of my favorite things about how much we talk together on the internet mm -hmm. is that you forget full conversations that we've had <laughs> on the internet. What was this one? <laughs> Once that camera turns off, I forget everything that happens. I, I know. It's just so wild to me that we that we can, like, have whole conversations, and then I can reference our own conversations, and you're like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't have about. the storage space. Hammond is the guy who creates Jurassic Park. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. In the movie that you've seen. 
Yep. <laughs> I watched it once. Good movie. Enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm terrible guys, with names. Guys, the, my favorite the, my favorite thing that happens in this household is that I will be like, hey, do you want to go see this movie? And she's like, I don't know what that is. And I'm like, babe, we have multiple trailer reactions on our channel of us watching the trailers. To Like, I have video evidence of you watching the trailer for this movie. <laughs> and she's like, nah, I've never seen it. And I can pull up our YouTube channel and be like, you, I, this is your face watching the trailer Look, for the movie we are talking about. When the camera is on, I won't remember it. <laughs> I just absolutely will not. That, um, is, that is not true. When the camera's off, you will also not remember that's it. That's also true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's fair. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. Anyway, <laughs> um, they're with Norden, who is... Um, uh, VPN that you can buy. Uh, no, I'm kidding. He is a uh, former a obligator who's a little bit of a weirdo uh, and is the um, uh, is helping them read books so that they can come up with a strategy. Mm. Uh, and Ellen's like, did I leave any loopholes in my laws? Yeah. Uh, says it yeah. says that Ellen should focus on his own opinion, not what everybody else thinks. Well. Yeah. Um... Uh, Vin uh, comes in and is like, hey, there's a poisoned well. And Ellen is like, oh, we didn't talk about the poisoned well. There's a poisoned well. Oh, yeah. we already Ellen yeah. already knew about that. It's yeah. fine. It's not terribly important in this section anyways. And then Vin fucking loses her mind. Not, like, in a big way, but she just is like, oh, he found out about the poisoned well, and he didn't immediately tell me about it. Clearly, Reen is right, and he doesn't want to be with me anymore. And this is where my low of the book begins. Uh, and it is that Vin, it kind of began in the last section. Vin, Vin's like need for her partner to understand her by being the same person as her is very, is very much not my favorite thing to read. Yeah. 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 It feels very juvenile and I get it. She's 18. Like, yeah, I get it. I, it makes sense for the character. It doesn't mean I enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, I I'm not a big fan of the love triangle no. of this book. It's no. I, in in a book that has a lot of stuff that I really do love, it is it's just the and and I think that a lot of it's just the way that it's written isn't my favorite. Sure. Um it's a little bit too it's too dependent on the misborn of it all and not on Zane actually doing things that um Yeah. You like, know what I mean? I'm like Vin has no reason to like this person. He's not likable. No. He's not... I would understand it more if we saw more kindness. Or personality from Zane. Yes. Like, Zane, they, they just kind of, like, spar, and he tells her how much Ellen sucks and will never understand her. But, like, they don't really have conversations outside of that. Yes. And I think that that's why it's lacking for me. I think that this, this whole thing could have worked if it had started from a place of Zane... Being a, being more interesting, <laughs> as opposed to being so like negative all the time. He's he, my problem with Zane and her relationship isn't that she sees something in someone other than Ellen. I totally get it. Ellen is very busy. He's running the kingdom. I could totally see how you could write it, her being pulled away from him mm -hmm. in an interesting way. Yeah. Zane is so bland to me. That I don't see what she sees in him outside of that he understands her because he's misborn. Well, and Zane is only really interesting, I think, when he's with Straff. Like, and we see that, but Vin never sees that. Yes. Like, you know, I don't think Zane is a totally bland, nothing character. I just think to Vin, he has no personality, and so it confuses me. Yeah. Right? Um, Judah, thank you so much for that super chat. Y'all are just fucking mad lads today. Uh, one thing that helped me at Swell the Triangle is that she never loves or even likes Zane. She thinks she deserves him. She doesn't think she deserves Ellen and that Ellen is moving beyond her. Yeah, I, and I, 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 I understand that. I totally understand that idea of, like, you know, like, we, we take what we think we deserve or whatever it is. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I just don't... Uh, yeah, I... 
I get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> like, I, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's weird. Not, it's just not my favorite. Uh, and Bryce, thank you for joining the Nargs. Welcome back. Uh, I don't think she likes him. I think he represents what she dislikes in herself and what she thinks she deserves. Oh, I yeah. totally see that. Yeah. I 100% see that. I just wish that for me, that I got more of her personality. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they had interactions that weren't just sparring. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like, which, like, which, like, I get it. But there's gotta, there's gotta be something, something else, anything else. Yeah. I am V fan. Thank you for that super chat as well. Zane is my least favorite Cosmere character. I, I think that Zane suffers from this book having a lot of plots in it, uh-huh. and that Vin isn't the main character of this book, and so <laughs> she's. But she's like, I'm the hero of ages. <laughs> yes. But but because, so I think that if you're going to build a love triangle like this in your book. The most successful way to do that is for the, the the top of the triangle, which is the person who both, you know, it, it, this isn't a true love triangle in that it's not a three-way. It's the two boys brothers, that who would are be in weird. two Vin. Yeah. But Vin isn't the main character, right? Uh-huh. Ellen is the main character of this book. Ellen's actions change everything. Ellen is the one who has to respond to the sub-character's actions. I think Vin is about to become the main character, but so far, yeah, it's definitely been Ellen's story. Maybe, but she hasn't been so far. Mm -hmm. And so Vin is in a love triangle between a tertiary character and the main character of the book. Yeah. But it's all about Vin. And so it puts that tertiary character in a weird, like, outside place. Mm -hmm. Because if you positioned Vin as the main character... And then Ellen and Zane were the secondary characters. Yeah. Then they're on equal footing. But Ellen and Zane are never on equal footing because Ellen is even above Vin in terms of important to the plot of this novel. And I think that that's why it takes away from the plots that I'm actually interested in this book because there's no way that it could go anywhere. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. And so I think that like it just is like a foundational issue for my taste around the structure of this novel in that Fair. Zane always feels like he is just pecking away at more interesting plots rather than the love triangle ever feeling like it is actually the plot of this book. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah. It never is the focus. It is always just sort of this distraction. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things going on in this book. Like, there, there are plot lines that get dropped for like 10 chapters before they come back that to have this like love triangle pecking away in the background is not my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hear you. Yeah. It, it's and also I'm not gr- my favorite. And I'm so grateful that it's over. Um, I just don't... I, I, I never found him interesting enough for how much oxygen he takes up. Unless God comes back. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah. Jesus? Anyways. Zane, Is that you, Jesus? Zane, Vin, fight. Yeah. She's like, oh, shit, he's got ATM. Yeah. And then Zane stops. And he's like, oh, wait, you actually don't have the ATM stash. Here, take this. It's dangerous to go alone. Um, <laughs> no, he doesn't give that to her here. Does he not? No. Nope. Oh, I guess he like goes and gets some. And no, he's like, z- yeah, because he has to go make the fake uh, ATM. Right, um, the, fa- the fake the fake ATM. Did we say the a- AMV fans? Yes. 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 Uh, Quebecican, thank you for uh, joining the NARGs. I've gifted myself a membership for six months, though still trying to find the gift membership option. Wish me luck. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I don't know how YouTube works, so good luck. Uh, Yeah, I actually don't know where. Have I? I've never gifted a sub on YouTube. I've gifted subs on Twitch. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Um, Yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess she doesn't get the ATM there. Um, but he's, no. but he does say like Straff wants. I'm here to kill you, but I'm not going to do that. To, yeah, because I'm Ellen's half brother, and she's like, "What? I'm not going to tell Ellen that. That's not relevant." I called it. I knew it. Well, okay. we already knew that. I know we already knew that, but I but remember before when I was like, I wish in this section we'd stop before we found it out because I was like, I know it. I know it's Ellen's brother, and then it's fine. Um, I'm I'm over it. We knew that last section. Yeah, and I remember. Last section, I guessed it before we got oh, to that point. Oh, last, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that, oh, yeah, I yeah. would have been so right. I would have got points for predictions. Um, it's fine. Sorry, no points for you. No points for me. Do you want to make a prediction right now? Bold prediction for next week? Do I? Yeah, you want points. Make a bold prediction. My prediction is they go to the Well of Ascension. Wow, thanks for that. <laughs> definitely giving you points. Definitely, definitely giving you points. It counts. Okay, um, it counts. Chapter 35. 
Vin is uh, in her new dress. She got a pretty dress. Yeah. She's like, wow, I really, I get it. I get how these uh, these Mistborn dresses are pretty fucking rad. It's going to be really relevant. So. Yeah. Very, very relevant. Uh, uh, they go and have dinner with Set. Yeah. Um, And they're like, oh, yeah, we have your daughter. And he's like, Ugh. yeah. Her. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't give a fuck. I, I do love that he's like, yeah, I don't want her back. Well, I wondered, I started to wonder if she was there because he told her to be. Because she's a Mistborn. I, but I don't know what, what she, or sorry, not a Mistborn. Sorry, sorry, an Alamancer. <laughs> She's no. not a Mistborn. No, She's no, 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 a no. rioter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I, I think that rioters are probably among the less useful mistings to have. Well, it's and well, so if that's your only one, if you only have a rioter, there's not a lot you're getting out of that. I think the soothers and rioters are great for like political situations, but I, uh, like right now they're not in a game of like you know sneaky politics or in a game yeah. of outright war. So mm-hmm. I think it is definitely less useful. I also think me. they're only useful if you can control them, and she does not seem. She seems. I, I think that Set views. I, I think that if she was a soother, Set would be more inclined. But I think that Set views a daughter who is not on his side and is um, uh, willing to riot in order to bring down her own father as more of a detriment to have around than a positive. Probably. Because if you have someone in the room who is actively trying to sabotage you by fucking with the emotions of the people you're meeting with, I think that you have a problem on your hands. Yep. Right? Definitely. Like, if she made every single assemblyman who came into the room a little bit more antagonistic towards her dad because she's upset with him, you have a, you have a, that's a bad situation. Yeah. And, and honestly, a soother could do the same thing by just taking away any sort of trust or, oh, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I do think Seth's like, I do not want that woman around. She is a liability. Yeah. 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 The dinner does not go well. Uh, <laughs> Ellen's like, I'm leaving. And Seth's like, I can keep you hostage. Yeah, but you're not that valuable. So then it says a rioter is the less useful of powers. Let me riot your trust in me. No, I'm I'm saying that it's it's if you can riot, very useful, right? Having a rioter who works for you is, I think, a or a soother, right? And I we see this with Bree sometimes. If you do not trust the rioters and soothers around you, then they are useless. Right. They, in fact, they're worse than useless. They are a active threat to you because unless you, you, because you don't know what they're doing to other people. So unless you have absolute faith in them politically, it is much safer to not have them in the room than it is to have them in the room. Unless you are a hundred percent sure that they are absolutely on your team and have your best interests at heart in every single way. Otherwise, they are so dangerous. <laughs> like, like the, the only reason why Breeze is so valuable to the crew is that they know that he's soothing, but they also know that he has their best interests at heart. Without that, Breeze is the most dangerous person in Luthadel. Outside of a Mistborn, obviously. Um, you, you, you have to... You have to view them as having their own interests. And if you cannot satisfy all of their interests, you have no idea what they're going to do in that political meeting that might harm your vision. And so you might as well just not have them. It's a distraction. Fabu. <laughs> exactly. Why be a rider or a soother when you could just be a problem? <laughs> Uh, mental manipulation powers freak me out. I don't even like enchantment school stuff. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I'm so glad magic doesn't exist. Like, magic is so fun in books, right? It Magic is so fun in stories. Magic, in reality, is the worst nightmare I can possibly think of. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, the idea that... Because it would just always be... It's like um, uh, Gen V had the the boy who has mental manipulation powers, and what does he do? He sexually assaults women because if there if people have magic, at least half of them are going to abuse it. Yeah, people suck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Judah, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Set is secretly a softie who I think learned to overcompensate because of his given lot in life in this world. He loves his children. He's just a bastard. He's a slaver, so I'm not going to go with softy. 
Yeah, no, I, I'm going to disagree with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, he's a bad, bad man. Yeah, he's like, not. Nah, I'm going to enslave these people again. Yeah, no, he's not good. He's also, he also, doesn't he say like, oh no, I treat the Ska worse than the, the Lord Ruler did? He's like, oh yeah, no, I did shit to them that would make the Lord Ruler blush. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking dark. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that's a line in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. Very well might be. Um, all right. Uh, let's, they, they have dinner. Uh, it's interesting. Set is like, why are you doing this? Um, and Ellen is like, cause I want to save the city. And then Set is like, all right, well, uh, you can save the city by giving the, me the ATM. And Ellen is like, I don't have the ATM. Um, yeah. and Vin is like, I don't know why he's not concealing his Alamancers. Like they're just in the room. There's no copper cloud. Yeah, Set also realizes that Breeze played him so fucking hard. Like, he was like, yeah. I, of course I recognized Breeze. And, uh, you think I wouldn't recognize one of the famous people? Yeah, and then he's like, yeah. And then uh, Alan's like, well, yeah, like, why do you think, like, you know, you showed up with an army? And he's like, well, no, Breeze was adamantly against it. And then he's like, wait a fucking second, that motherfucker. <laughs> You got played, dude. You got played. You lost your daughter and you got played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sucks to suck, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so Seth is like, you're not a very valuable hostage. You can go. Yeah. And he's like, all right, cool. Yeah, Bye. chapter 36. We did learn, though, that um, it's really hard to attack Keep Hastings, where he is uh, stationed, because of the elevator system that uh, keeps you from being able to get up the floors. Which is really fascinating. Yeah, that's like, fun. I love the idea of it. Um, in the real world, in a world of Mistborns, eh, maybe not the most useful defense system, but... Sure, yeah. Because uh, it also means that you can't escape. Yeah. If you're attacked by... Like, the problem with the Keep Hastings structure is that if you are attacked from above, which you know people can do, there's nothing you can do about it. Granted, when a Mistborn attacks, there's not a lot you can do about it anyway. Um... Well, no, when a Mistborn attacks, there's something you can do about it. When Vin attacks, you're fucked. Like, you know, the Haze Killers and stuff are, like, specifically trained to fight, like, Alamancers and Mistborns. Mm -hmm. But Vin is just too fucking good at what she does. Oh, no, but I just mean that, like, so <laughs> if you're building a structure to defend yourself against a Mistborn, mm -hmm. the better way to build would be down, not up. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you're defending against an army, the better way to build is up, not down. Yeah. Which so you're is you're fucked one way or the other. It just made me think about it from like a strategic point of view. Towers are the worst thing for if you have a Mistborn. Because it is so much easier for them to get up to you than it is for your Haze Killers to get up to save you. So like the mm -hmm. Haze Killers are only... An, they gotta be there already. Even if it's not Vin, the, the Haze Killers have to be around you in a bubble. Whereas if you're in the ground, the Mistborn's mobility becomes less of a factor. Maybe there's a metal that digs. <laughs> dig a tunnel, dig, dig mm, a tunnel. Yeah. I, no, I don't, I don't know. But no, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, chapter 36 is... Um, yeah. Uh, Sezed and uh, Tindwill. Sezed's like, yeah, I've got this like rubbing that I got from the, the the place. And then Tindwill's like, yeah, rub me. <laughs> no, she doesn't want that. No, she doesn't want to get pregnant anymore. <laughs> no, but she's, there's there she there, does not want sex. They are gonna do oral, and you cannot convince me otherwise. Maybe, but she's kind of Tindwill says, is gonna ride that tongue like a. Fucking sea dude. She says, she's like, you know what? I'm good. She's going to be creating the I'm good. The liquid in that. No, no, no. She doesn't want to, she does not want to be impregnated. But say, no, she's Tindwell, like, I've had enough of men. Yes, which, because she doesn't want to be, she, she's like, I'm good on buns in the oven. She wants to be a lesbian. But there's, there is no, you, you will not convince me that those two do not engage in the oral arts. Do you think that, do you think that like, say Zed could have a really like, small tongue for a while and then like have just just use his like pewter mines to just grow the muscles in his tongue to make it like long and like venom that's hentai isn't it i mean it might be the future of tindwell's sexual relationship i guess like if your body could enlarge with pewter yeah you could maybe enlarge your tongue hot <laughs> 
Uh, Sit on my face. What a wild. Um... I mean, Tinwell could still research while he's down there, just you know, doing his job. Um, <laughs> he's got like an ignore fetish. He's like, no, you just you do you do your thing. I'm gonna do my thing. Uh, Fabu Moo says you could say they are cunning linguists. Thank you for the super hey, chats. Thank they you, are Fabu. definitely that. <laughs> that's that's a way to put that. Um, yeah, and so uh, Breeze is meeting with um, his people. He's like uh, soothing everyone. He's like, man, whatever. Fuck yeah, he's they're they're at like the refugee camps, and uh, he's like, it's no different than if I was a woman with big titties. You know, it's the same thing. Uh, same he thing. goes back to the palace and he meets with clubs, um, mm-hmm. which is his like nightly routine. And we get a really interesting like view into Breeze here, mm-hmm. in that he he can't stop soothing. He's like an addict. And he views this as an being around clubs is easy because clubs will always be um, smoking, not literally smoking, but, but smo- smoking. smokering. And smokering. Uh, we need the way we need to differentiate it somehow. Yeah. Uh, and so he views it as a break, and I I totally get that. Like I this was the most human breeze has ever felt to me in these books. Yeah. Was when he was like, I can't stop, but I can't do it to you, and so it's nice. Yeah. Yeah, we just get to we just get to be here together. Like yeah. get to have some company and I'm not worried about all the other extra stuff. And I was like, Oh, I, I totally understand. And then we find out that uh not only is Breeze not that attracted to an eighteen year old, he is being like magically attracted to an eighteen year old, which maybe that explains Leonardo DiCaprio, right? He just oh. keeps running into rioters. Uh, who lose their powers at 25. Maybe you age out of being able to riot men. Uh, and so when they turn 25, Leonardo is like, whoa, what the fuck has been happening? And then another 18-year-old rioter is like, Alamance. Here's the thing. You can only riot emotions that are already there. So I think it's that Leo himself just 25 and it just dies and they can't riot it anymore, you know? Yeah, that might be it. Yeah. I get that. I could understand that, right? He's a weird, like, n- like number fetish. He's like, I'm I not love attracted... the number 24, but 25, ugly number. Hate that number. Like, I'm not attracted to college girls because they're in college and that's gross. Um, but, like, they're physically attractive enough that there's something to riot there. Yeah, like, sure. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I could be magically attracted to a college-age woman. Yeah, exactly. I'm just not, like, naturally attracted enough to a college-age woman that I would ever, sp- you know, talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Or like, yeah. But Ariane is a working breeze, uh, and it's a, uh, uh, it's rough. Uh, Gordon, thank you so much for that. Gordon Chad, thank you for that super chat. Yeah, thank uh, you. Nerdy Claris, always asking the best questions. We really are. You're welcome. Uh, Ky- K- Chai Ronian says, "Ew, education. Oh no, education's great. I just don't want to be with you while you're being educated. I want to date you after you have your education. Yeah. I like educated, not educating." You don't like teachers? Wow, rude. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> My God. I wouldn't date a teacher. Why? There's too many other people in their life. Oh my God. Yeah. Ah, uh, it me, me or nothing, me or me or. It's bust. not me or nothing, but like, I don't know. Teachers always. <laughs> You're you're grasping at straws here. It's great. You're trying to find. No, a I'm trying not to say what I want to say. Um. Oh God. We have teachers in our chat. And they're great. I you. just don't want to date them. Honestly. Teachers like kids too much. And I don't want to be around kids. That's fair. Not like sexually. Teachers just like don't. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I they... mean, some of them do. Yikes. Uh, Looking at you, woman from Iowa. Uh, oh, oh, no. I'm not talking about fictional. I'm talking about real people. Yeah, no. Did you see Did you see the news story? This was like a month ago where there were like two women who fucked a 14-year-old that they were both the teachers of. And I was like, what are you doing? What? How? Like, how? In what world do you like get into the beginning of that conversation with another adult and be like, yeah, but do you want to fuck that 14? Like, how do you go from being... Uh, co-teachers of a child to how do you start the conversation how do you broach it how do you like you know what i mean because that's one of those want to fuck like one of those people had to be the first person in that conversation to go i kind of want to have a threesome with that kid with you and i don't know how in the world you start that conversation the the level of anxiety in me at the thought of talking to another adult 
in about that is so high <laughs> that I think that I would implode. I think that but I think that I would <laughs> become a dwarf star and I would absorb the earth into the density of my matter to avoid well, ever wild. having to have that conversation with another person. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And it is it is yeah, it's um wild. Just so wild that that's a thing. It I, really is. Yeah. Yeah. Quebecian, thank you for five gifted subs. Quebecian, thank you. Um, you found Joe a button. Lurker. You you found yeah you found um, a button. Also, Quebecian. <laughs> Appreciate it. Oh no, never mind. Yeah. And Brian says, I think that says good things about you. Sure, sure, sure. I and look, I get it. I'm not a pedophile, and I'm I'm so grateful that all of the things I'm sexually attracted to are considered normal by the society that I live in. And moral and legal. <laughs> They're moral and legal. Sure, sure, but like. In the society that I'm in, right? Like, I'm a queer man in a country where I can go have sex with another man and I'm not going to be beheaded sure, for it. Sure, 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 sure. Um, 60 years ago, it would be considered very immoral for me to go have sex yeah, with another man. Yeah, yeah. I'm very lucky that I am attracted to things that within the society I live in, very normal, totally allowed, right? Super cool. So, I have empathy for pedophiles who have never acted upon it. But... Once you cross that line. But those teachers, man, I just... Yeah, no, that's a no. I just... That's yeah. wild. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like, make how choices. did the third person get involved? Were they both... I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Crazy. The, what, yeah. Like, how did that play out? I don't fucking know. I don't want... Yeah. But I, I want to know. Like, I just want to know how the like conversation how? started. I don't want to know anything after that. I just hey, want to know. do you want to go fuck that child with me? Like, th- it can't be how it went down. You know what Someone's I mean? Someone's going to clip that. <laughs> Shut up. God damn it. I, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where were we? Um, Ariane is rioting Breeze into being attracted to her, which is so sad. Can you? Yeah. Although, like, if you had those powers, it's. I do appreciate the Breeze perspective we get in this book of like he doesn't have relationships with women because he's like, how would I? How would I know? How would I know? Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. Because it's the. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like I like personally. This is not passing any judgment on anyone, but I personally wouldn't, like, pay somebody for sex because I'd be, like, paying for it. It wouldn't be... It's different because yeah. they're not actually attracted to to me. You know what I mean? Like, Breeze is in that position where he's like, I can't ever know... Unless maybe they are also a smoker. But, like, I... I, I he, you know, his pool of choices is very, very small if that's yeah. the case. So he's kind of like, I I don't know if they're actually attracted to me, if they actually like me, or if it's just part of, like, the the soothing that is going on. Um, and so he's like, well, I guess, guess I'm going to be lonely, and that's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, you for know? sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. Anyway, um, she's like, yeah, so I don't think it's clubs. <laughs> yeah. Vin is ticking off or crossing off the, the, the list. Uh, so she follows Demu that night. And she's mm-hmm. like, what's Demu up to? And Demu is the a priest of the Church of Halsen. Survivor. Of, of uh, fucking Church Kelsier. Church of Survivor, yeah. And Vin's like, well, that, okay, yeah, that explains that. Never mind. I don't think he's a spy. He's a fucking <laughs> yeah. holy man who thinks that I'm Jesus. That's got to, that's weird. <laughs> well, yeah, but to be fair, he is the one person I would imagine joining that church because of what Kelsier did. Oh, I'm saying, you know, like, I, I, especially of the crew. Yeah, all the crew knew Kelsier too well to be like, to be like, ah, he's God. Yeah, yeah. like I, ma- I imagine even the apostles at times were like, ha- ha- you know, like Jesus is out there doing his thing. If he was, I fuck, I don't know. Um, you know, he was using his warlock spell slots, two miracles a day. And uh, he's out there doing his thing. I would imagine that, like, Paul is some days being like, oh, no, that's my friend Jesus. And people are like, yeah, Jesus the Savior. And Paul's like, nice oh, money. right, right, right. Nice yeah, money. no, sometimes I forget that because we, you know, we were playing craps last night. And it's just, you know, it's weird to think of him as a Savior sometimes. Yeah. When, you know, I watch Mary wash his feet at night and it's the only thing that gets me hard. You know what I mean? Like, Paul, notoriously, Bigfoot fetishist. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of feet. Big, big foot fetishists. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually no longer allowed in the state of Mississippi. Uh, <laughs> as of this moment. Uh, yeah, so they're like, oh, I don't think it's Demu. Yeah. And Vin is like, hey, Demu, 
promise I won't uh, tell anyone. I'm going to tell Ellen. But everyone yeah. else, don't worry about it. I'll keep your secret. Mm-hmm. And then that's, yeah, he's like, all right, I don't think it's Demu. Um, and we get this interesting, intru- this moment where Demu's talking about a uh, yellow sky and the, or a, a ash free sky and a yellow sun. And it's fascinating because Vin's like, where did you hear that? Like, I didn't even hear that. And yeah. he's like, I don't know. And she's like, fuck, this is getting out of control. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 37, uh, Sezed and Tindwill are doing more studies. They're not doing oral at the moment because uh, they're both speaking. They're very busy. Yes. Uh, yes. They're they're basically like, we do not have a lot of time because the city's going to fall. So we have to do as much research as possible. And somewhere in the fictional universes of fantasy, Hermione Granger got fucking wet. Adult Hermione Granger, moist at the thought of this. Yeah. Um, I'm talking like 19 years later, multiple kids from any Granger was like, people are doing research for a week straight without sleeping. That is... That is my kink. That is my kink. Yeah, that is it. If only Ron would study with me. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, so they're, they're trying to figure out, like, you know, like, confirm what the deepness is. They have, like, different theories. Uh, they talk about it. They're like, oh, well, this king guy, um, he, like, talked about how the the... How, talked about the dangers of the mist, but not that like he the but the, the swords were useless against it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, well, like you can't cut mist, so like that kind of makes sense. Well, and it's 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 specifically the language that the mist was the reason that they died, but that not that the mist was attacking them. Yes, right. Like oh, they died because of the mist is linguistically very very different from the mist was killing us. Yes. Yeah. Which makes the like the the log book so much more suspicious because the mist like stabbed some yeah it's yeah. it's it's really fascinating um, and so it says that is like fuck Vin was right yep yeah 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 uh, and Tindwell's like well I did my best with Ellen uh, because I cannot be seen to play favorites I guess I should go advise the other people outside unless. Give me a reason, says Ed. Unless. Give me a reason. Yeah. Use that venom length tongue on me. And give me a reason to stay. And well, says it works. like it works. Um you could stay. And she's like, that's reason enough. That's it. Great yeah, question. That's all I need. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, he's basically like, I mean, I guess you could stay. And she's like, amazing. No, he says, please, I want you to stay. He is as non-committal to it as a terraceman could be. And she is. But you didn't see how so big his fucking, tongue was when he said it. That's true. That's true. It's just like Gene Simmons' length, and she's looking at that tongue like, "I don't need you to say it. I need you to feel it." Good lord! It's um, not about words. It's about actions. Says Ed. Um, Ellen gets a dumb idea. Chapter thirty-eight. <laughs> yeah, Ellen is like, "I've solved my problems." No, Idiot. no, you did not. You solved nothing. No. You get nothing. Oh my god, we're over two hours. He's doing And we're best. not even in section four Anyways, yet. Anyways, yeah, let's keep on um, moving. I'm gonna pee. You move quick. Oh, nerdy pee break. It that doesn't, doesn't happen. happen. Often. Uh, Vin and Ellen are, they're going to the election, okay? And Ellen is like, I have a surprise. Shh, don't tell anyone. And Vin is like, it's kind of weird that he didn't tell me beforehand, especially since it seems to involve me somehow. Um,. It's a little sus. But uh, she figures it out. She's like, oh, he joined the church. Because religion uh, has power. As uh, as we've all seen. Uh, <laughs> in, in our own society. Um, yeah, he's like trying to get this guy to vote for him. And he's like, okay, if I join their church, maybe that'll do it. And it doesn't, doesn't work. Um, Vin sus some people. She's like, something's wrong. My instincts are off. I don't know what the fuck instincts Vin has. I need to get me some of those. But she can literally tell anytime something's about to go bad. Um, so yeah, he, uh, Ellen's like, yeah, woohoo, go Survivor, woohoo, um, and gets attacked. <laughs> that that that's it. There's a big fight. Um, there's like six Alamancers that show up to absolutely murder Ellen. And Vin is like, no, not on my watch. Thank God for this sick fucking dress. And this that I can fight sick in. Beat. I thought you were gonna drop a beat. That's okay. There you go. There you go. 
Come on, little Roos. Give us a little, little Roos rap. No. Uh... <laughs> you can watch us react to this chapter on the internet if you're a member of our Patreon or YouTube yep. uh, memberships. Yeah. So if uh, you got one of those gifteds today, you can go listen, you can go watch us go, ooh, ah, what? Crazy. It, I mean, it was a sick fight. You can also get 50% off at Nerdy Night at MissMountainGaming.com by using the code Nerdy. 50? Wow. 15. Gross. Don't do that. Uh, MissMountainGaming.com. Use code Nerdy Nightly 15 for 50% off your order. Miss Mountain, I saved the best ads Disgusting. for you. Disgusting. How, where are you in the chapter? I wasn't um, listening. We got into a fight. Yeah. Evan gets attacked. And um, Vin f- beats the shit out of everybody yeah. while also protecting everybody. It's yeah. pretty incredible. Vin is like, oh shit, I can't like fly the coins around because that'll just like kill random people and I don't want to do that. Yeah. So she saves Ellen. She saves all of the people. And yeah. she still fucking kills every single person. Every Alamancer. Uh, sorry, every, every Alamancer. It's a close fight. It's a close fight though. Yeah, um, and in a moment of uh, victory, she duralments her head through... Wait, wait. this is where Orsor in- in- intervenes. Okay, go. Well, that happens first. No, no, I'm saying explain it. Oh, well, we know that Orsor cannot, like, really, can't, like, kill a human, but, like, literally pushed his contract to the, to the limit, where he just kind of, like, attacks... Without killing and and get seriously injured yeah. because of it to to save Vin's life. Or so it's not fucked. It's not going great, but because of or what Orsor does, yeah. Then she uh, punches her head through somebody else's head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that um, what's fascinating about this is that Vin <laughs> is so practiced at fighting with all of her misborn abilities at once that when some of them are taken away by either having coin shots there or you know different other Alamancers negating individual elements of her powers, plus the crowd. Mm -hmm. Uh, She isn't as practiced in dealing with that kind of a situation. Yep. She's not a straight-up brawler. She's too small, right? Because Pewter can't... She can't out-Pewter a larger Pewter arm. Yeah. And I thought that was... The way that all this was really really fascinating. I I didn't love the, like, oh, Ellen is horrified. He's never going to love me now that he watched me put my head through another man's head and pop it like a fucking water balloon. Um, But I get it. I've also never had someone look at me... It, with a with horror on their face, like true like horror, and oh, so wow. I don't know what that feels like. I don't think you've auditioned enough then, because I've definitely been in front of the audition table, just giving it my all, and just looking at them, knowing they're thinking this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. But you think that's what they're thinking? They don't have it on. They don't have a horror on their face. I like, wish that that was true. Sh- that's an exaggeration. Mary Sugarman and I have had... Uh, Nobody has sat there in your auditions being like... Yes, they have. No, no, they have I make some bold choices sometimes, and I have... I've mooned a table before. I've yes. seen some weird faces. Oh, I'm sure that there were definitely faces of surprise. Oh, no, straight up horror. I had, I, I, I had an audition end one time with... Why are you... were not there. I know how auditions go, and they deliberately try and give you as little as possible. They deliberately do not Yeah, react. no. N- not not in New York. They can be downright mean sometimes. Especially that it's not not your like first audition with them, but if you've known a casting director for a few years, <laughs> they will be like they that was no n- no, that was bad. We'll see you we'll see you for the next thing, but that was not your best. But that is not a horrified expression on the face of someone you love dearly looking at like directly oh they don't love me at all but we're friends you know i've never had someone i love dearly well i can't relate no one has ever looked at me with a sense of genuine horror on their face so that's i guess that's awesome that's just me that's that is like privilege you're privileged sure sure we'll go with that because um, that's what makes sense in this situation. Um, yeah, I, I can't know what that feels like. And so I don't love that moment with Vin because, like, clearly, like, Ellen is just not used to the level of violence. 
that like that Vin is. And so I, I do really think that she mistakes it as being directed at her when it's like, holy fuck, that guy's head just like uh, got obliterated. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one thing I do want to see actually, every pewter arm that we see is like a big burly dude. I want to see like Vin fight another like scrappy pewter arm. Like a, I think that that would be a like a fun, uh, a fun way to to like pit characters against each other in a way that we haven't seen yet. In a I fight. don't think that those exist. What do you mean? I think that it, it goes back to book one, right? Where I think that if all you have is pewter, you you kind of become burly over time. Like your body would like physically adapt to it in a way that. Like, Mistborns, I think their bodies all kind of physically adapt to how they move around. And I think that pewter arms, in a similar way, would become very muscular very quickly. Because you essentially, like, are... You essentially are on steroids, right? It, it affects how quickly your muscles recover and how quickly they heal. And you are constantly doing, like, physical activity that exerts your muscles beyond what they're usually capable of. But, but so you would become very physical and very, like... Your, your muscles would grow very fast. But it doesn't exert them. Because yes, it does. when you're burning pewter, you rely on the pewter, not on your muscle. And so if you burn pewter too much, you actually become weak. But if you don't use it too much, that's the same thing with steroids, right? If you don't use them too much, your muscles will grow because you are still physically using them. The pewter allows for you to ignore the feelings until you turn your pewter off, but your and also, it helps you heal quickly. Yeah, but it definitely helps you recover. I, I don't think that you would. I, I don't think that you would find a pewter arm who has been using it for a while and isn't very muscular. I don't think you could stay live. Your your muscles would inherently grow bigger. Why? Because you're using them and then healing, using them and healing, using them and healing. You're you're gonna grow your muscles. But like the muscle isn't being used, like like you don't you don't build muscle when you're burning pewter because if the pewter Why takes not? over. No, 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 no. It strengthens your muscles, but it doesn't. No. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. Kelsey or tells her if you burn pewter constantly and then you turn it off, you are weaker than when you started. Like like if you Let's, become reliant on pewter. I want to keep this conversation going, sure, but yeah, I want yeah. to get to these really quick. Judah, thank you so much for that super chat. After Thanks several so rereads, this part made me laugh because Vin thought Ellen was horrified, but Ellen was essentially just like, "Bruh, that's hot." Kind of, yeah. He's like, wow, she's so fucking amazing. She's really um, good at what she does. And then Dedzie says, pewter is a funny word. Thank you for that super chat. Uh, pewter is a funny you. word when it's repeated a lot. That's fair. We're about to repeat it some more. Thank you, Dedzie. Pewter does not magically move things for you. It makes your muscles stronger in the moment when you're using them, right? It's like pre-workout. But on, like, what? a massive level, right? That's just energy. Sure, sure, sure. But, but what is any of this except energy? Alamancy is just burning them for to use their energy in very specific ways. You so then why isn't Vin also but she burns pewter all the time? I be, because of the other ways in which she's using Alamancy to move in different ways, right? They're, they're, they constantly talk about how uh, Mistborns like perch on top of things, and because of the way they're stretched. In different ways, elementically, their bodies are adapting to what they're capable of. Whereas pewter arms would, their bodies over time would adapt to being a thug, right? It, their, your body would naturally adapt to the kinds of work that you're doing. And so the Mistborns using their other elementsies to move in different ways. See, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think that like you could have a, a pewter arm who is a dancer, who the pewter is used for balance and lightness and a hundred percent a delicate movement. Hundred percent, that person wouldn't be a fighter. But, but a pewter arm, I'm just a saying, trained like, pewter arm, yeah. is because of the kinds of training that you're going to do to be good at fighting. They are going to become. But a, a, a life pewter arm would be an incredible assassin, like almost like ninja esque style, like very silent and deadly and like accurate. Like I feel if, like if anyone was willing to use them that way, then yes. If they were trained it that way, yes. That they are. I'm just used... saying that's what I want to see. Sure, sure, sure. I'm just saying that within the world, it makes more sense to train them to be bodyguards 
because Mistborn exists to fill that other role and are better at that other role than a Pewter Arm could There's ever be. There's just not a lot of them. Like, I feel like if you uh, had... That's fair. It, it, you know, if you if you get a Pewter Arm, another Pewter Arm, like, you're, like, a noble and you got a bunch of thugs already, like, you know, training one of them to be... to almost fill in more of a Mistborn-esque role, like, wouldn't go amiss. I don't know. I just thought it would... I think it would be cool to see Vin fight someone who is very much more similar to her... Like, dexterity and... Oh, and, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. I'm just saying that, like, I, I, I think that creating that, would you it would have to be such a specific training regimen to get someone there, because I think that Pewter leans it, lends itself towards being more of a, like, tank. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I just know, like, Vin gets her, like, balance and stuff from, like, from the Pewter burning, and... I think that that, like, side of it, like, you know, you think pewter and you think muscly, but I, I think that there's there's more to it that I, I you know, I kind of hope is explored. That's all. Yeah, and I think that we might see that. Mm-hmm. I just think that for the way that Luthadel's run and the Alamancers around her, pewter arms, were, I think that they're more valuable to have a very, it, it, they're, they're not assassinating people that often, right? Like, that we think of them as being assassins because Kelsier introduced that into Luthadel. But prior to Kelsier, there had been 150, 200 years of really stable family dynamics within Luthadel, right? I thought that like 50 years ago they had like a noble war. No, it was like 100, no, the the Lord Ruler says like, it's good to let them do it every like 100 years. Okay. So if you're like five generations removed from a noble war, having a bunch of assassins isn't really that useful. They're not really doing anything. Now, in the aftermath, mm-hmm. I think absolutely assassins are great in this time period. But prior to that, like having pewter arms who are good for lifting and, and doing the uh, doing day-to-day stuff is more valuable to a family than... And having someone on payroll to like sit around in case a family war breaks out again. I, I just mean like if you are you you have a child who is female and grows up to be five foot one, mm-hmm. having them try and go toe to toe with big buff dudes ain't gonna cut it. They're gonna have to do what Vin does and be dexterous because they're never gonna win on a, in a push. Have push. we met a female pewter arm in this whole series? I don't think we have. No. I think they've all been male. Yeah. Or or no, gender nondescript. Sure, in, yeah. like fights, but maybe. there definitely hasn't been like, oh, lady pewter. I'm like that. That yeah. that's not a thing. And so I'm like, well, what happens to the the women who are born pewter arms? They like, get buff. Have you seen buff women? <laughs> no, which is fine. But like, what if you're also They're born? Carlac. You grow up to be short. Okay, we're we're getting back to Carlac versus Lazel. Lazel is a mistborn, and Carlac <laughs> uh, is a pewter arm. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know. I just, the idea came to me. I think it'd be cool. I, I, I hope it gets explored more. Cause like. I, yeah, I think that like, I think that a pewter arm would have to act, work really hard to not get buff. Maybe, maybe. I think they would, I think they would have to be a very intentional choice. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Franson, thank you so much for the super chat. It's training to match the talent. Not that the talent substitutes for the training. I agree with Claris. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that we're disagreeing with each other. Well, I just... She just wants to see something, and I'm saying that, like, in order to create that, it would have to be very specific. But I'm not saying that, like, we're... I don't know that we're really disagreeing. I think we disagree on, a, like, how pewter is actually, like, used, because you're like, oh, no, you would, like, bulk up. And I'm like, I don't I don't know if you would just do that inherently. I'm only saying you... that because the book says that, right? I'm only saying that because the way that it is set up is that pewter arms tend to be thugs. And that, like, yeah. it comes... And that, like, the personality yeah. almost comes with the metal. And that's just what we've been told. Like, I'm, I'm taking what the book says at face yeah. value and say, like, there's Which, probably room for other things. And the, yeah. But the, within the book, this is what they've said is how it works. The personality, all we've seen is, like, dudes, big dudes who are pewter arms. But, like, if you're born a, a tiny woman mm-hmm. and you're five foot nothing, whatever it is, like, you're going to have to use that skill in a different way because... Why? You can just get buff. No, you're never going to be as heavy as someone who is six feet tall. And if you get into a push match, oh, you're sure, fucked. Sure, sure, you're dead. Yeah. You you have to well, no, do something Pewter else. Arms can't push. If they get into a strength match, a contest of strength. Oh, when you said a push match, I was like, no, that's a misborn thing. No, 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 no. I mean, you like, meant literally pushing. Yeah, I mean, like, and my brain went to like coin pushing. No, yeah, or like you know, like Vin gets like grabbed by the person, and she's like, yeah. I'm small. 
I'm small. I don't have the body weight to contest with this person. Hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just so curious where all the like little pewter arm ladies I are at. I do wonder if you if if you depending on when you snap. Mm-hmm. I do wonder if you could, if you snapped pre-puberty, if you could even be a small pewter arm. Or if burning pewter through puberty would just inherently make you larger. Maybe, yeah. You know maybe. what I mean? Like, I don't even know if... Um, I don't know about taller, but maybe. Maybe. Well, but a lot of things affect your height. Look at my siblings, right? They're twins, but one of them is taller, and it's because they had a larger bed. Wait, really? Yeah. They look That's the, what the doctor same said. height to me. They are not. <laughs> they used to be, but um, in, in, like, adulthood, they're not the same height. Oh. Yeah. But they're identical twins, right? So, like, th- th- different things huh. affect how you grow. Um, yeah. People, uh, you can you can have your height really stunted by breaking a bone in your foot, uh, and your body won't grow the same way. Sure. And so I think that, like, I think that, yeah, burning pewter through puberty would absolutely probably make you grow a lot taller. You'd get bigger. You would, you're, cause, because you're, so much of growth is recovery from damage. Mm-hmm. And if pewter inherently makes you recover faster, mm-hmm. then you're going to grow larger. That's how steroids work, right? That's just, that's the function of them is to like put more recovery into the muscle so that it grows quicker. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, I know dancers who like, aren't like, like, like th- Thickly muscular, but they are very, like, lean muscle. Right, but it, they're doing very specific exercises to get there. Yeah. And so I think that a pure arm could absolutely do those exercises, mm-hmm. but what is the what is their marketable value after doing those exercises, right? What, what, what are you accomplishing in terms of your ability to be marketable to the job market around you by being a live dancer as a pure arm? Sure. As yeah. opposed to being an alamancer who's like, I'm... Brrr. And people are like, I get what that is. Come work for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very easy to, like, see what... Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I just was like, oh, the idea of, like, people that are more, like, Vin in that sense, but who are just born with the pewter burning ability. Like, yeah. you know, what, what the fuck are they supposed to do? One thing the book doesn't get into is, like, do pewter arms consume more calories? Because I would have to imagine they would, but... Well, I think the calories are the energy, and the energy comes from the metal. So I don't think so. Yeah, maybe. But I'm not sure. Um. Anyway, the, so <laughs> they go back uh, to the other palace. Vin is hurt, uh, but the vote still happens. Uh, Penrod receives 15 votes. Yeah. Ellen receives seven votes. Set receives two votes, which means that Ellen is going to be king. It's it's a, it, it's such a weird system. Um. The two-thirds thing is very strange to me. <laughs> uh, but so Ellen is going to be king, even though he only gets five votes or seven votes. And so the people who are voting for Set ask if they can change their vote. Mm-hmm. And Ellen could lie. And Norad uh, says that he will lie for him. Uh, he's like. But uh, Ellen does not lie. And so Penrod becomes king, which if you watch the reaction, I'm like, it's a little bit less interesting because I don't really know what Penrod's um, interests are and this is the problem with reacting to television episodes and to books is that sometimes it's fun to like watch the next thing and be like oh i get it um but people are like well you're reacting wrong because you're not just waiting until you're not waiting to have a reaction until you know everything and i'm like but then why am i reacting to tv episodes how would i do this yes um because we find out shortly after because then immediately part four uh penrod is working for straff uh straff's gonna get the city it's uh, not good. Straff sucks. Terrible person. Um, Straff yeah. is also fucking traumatized. Like, he is terrified of Vin. He's like, I remember the nothing that I felt. She needs to die. Like, This is where this plot gets a little bit convoluted for me. Okay. Just a little bit in that I don't see why this is better for Penrod. What? I, the, the, the calcul- Penrod gets to be king. Maybe. But the calculation of Penrod does not seem to have a great failsafe in place in case Set attacks because he lost. And Penrod is very lucky that Set doesn't just attack. I'm assuming his like a contingency is that Straff would then attack Set. Sure, but Set's already lost, so Set's already dead. I don't understand why Set doesn't immediately why Set's army upon his loss doesn't immediately attack, knowing that Set is now fucked. Set is dead. Somebody is going to kill Set. Either it's going to be Penrod's government or it's going to be Straff's. And so I, Penrod goes into this 
without a great backup plan for what happens if this causes Set to attack. And Set just doesn't, which is great, right? Like, for Penrod. But I was kind of like, the political calculation here, I don't know that Penrod did all of his math, right? I think, yeah. Because he gets I think very lucky that this works out for him. Draft. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, and I agree that he's scared of Shaft. I just, I, when he was like, yeah, and I guess just nothing's going to happen. And I was like, oh, okay, but the set absolutely could have attacked. Like, you're lucky that he didn't, more so than you, like, had a great plan. Because set has, in this day, been attacked by assassins and then lost the election. Yeah. And you're like, and now can't leave, right? They're not just going to let him out. Yeah. To, so it's, it's, it's this weird, like, this scene had this weird element to me of, like, it felt a little bit like plot rather than a reaction to the actions of the characters. Interesting. Okay. Just a little bit. It, it was, like, kind of a, like, fun for the twist of, like, oh, it's Straff. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a second, but, like, what was their plan if said attacked? Yeah. They didn't have one? Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's it. That, and so it was just a light kind of, like, it felt like it was for a book and not, like, where it's so much of this feels so naturalistic to what's happening to the characters, mm -hmm. this moment to me just felt a little bit too planned. Okay. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, sure. Because, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the backup plan. Yeah, yeah. I think that's totally valid. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, Penrod is working for Straff, and Zane keeps trying to poison Straff. Saronian uh, Saronian says, um, uh, with half vote, you would have a constant king changes whenever a small number of people change their opinion. So it makes sense to require a super majority. No, no, it makes sense to require a super majority to depose a king, but then you need a majority to choose the next king. It doesn't make sense to have a super majority twice because the chances of getting two super majority votes, you're always going, if you get the first super majority vote, but you need a second super majority vote to choose the person who replaces, you're just always going to end up but the chances of not ending up with your deposed king replaced on the throne, over, I, I do agree. You need at least one supermajority vote in this in process. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. But it should be the first one and not both. The problem is that both of them are supermajority votes. And so the chances of you getting a follow-up supermajority vote to a supermajority vote to replace that king and not just ending up with the king that you supermajority voted out is insane. Right? That's right. the problem with the issue, with the with the way this government works. Right. It isn't that there's, it's too willy nilly. It's, it's that the double of it, you're just nine times out of 10 going to end up back with the first guy back in power that you just super majority voted out. Yeah. Cause if you can't get everyone to agree again on the same person, he just stays. Yeah. But if the, if the, if you have a fucking unanimous vote to get rid of a King, cause he's terrible. But then you guys just can't agree on who should replace him. Yeah. You just end up with the terrible guy that you all think should be out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it is such a risky situation to put yourselves in. Yeah. Especially, uh, like Hydra says, especially if you have three or more candidates. It's like, fucking, um, Penrod is only one vote away <laughs> from a supermajority. He has 15 out of 24. That's incredible. When in a three-party system, look, if you're going to do a runoff, and then may, maybe if you're going to do it that way, right? Sure. But if it's just going to, if, if you can have five candidates, the idea that uh, with five, if everyone can vote for themselves, then it's, it, it, it just doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. the, the chances of five people voting for themselves and then nobody having a supermajority, it's too insane. There's too many problems with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, in theory, I can understand it, which is why I think that Ellen puts it into place. But the reality of it is that, like, it, it is too easy for people to take advantage of. And I think that's where Ellen's yes. flaws come in as being a, an idealist. Yeah, it, it is a system that would inherently support a tyrant and be detrimental to an honest ruler. Yeah. Which is what happens, right? Like, he essentially sets up a system that it would be so hard to depose a tyrant. Yeah. Where Did the only way to depose a tyrant would be another revolution. Yeah. And so he kind of creates a need for a second revolution, weirdly, with his system. Mm -hmm. Arzu, thank you for that super chat. Y'all have been so kind today. Yeah, seriously. What the thank heck is so going on? Uh, Arzu, uh, how would set attack the situation with the opposing armies hasn't changed? He's no Alamancer's left. Uh, yeah, he's not. Yeah, but he's he, he needs his army to come get him. 
Well, no, he needs to sneak out before his army attacks, because otherwise they will just storm the keep inside and straight up slaughter him. But Set snuck in, so he can sneak back out. Here's the thing. Set knows he's dead. Set took the gamble to come in here, and he knew if he lost, he would die. So he's going to sneak out and go down fighting anyways, is kind of like what I would imagine from this character. To be like, fuck you, Straff. Like, we're going to fight anyways, even though, like, I believe I've lost. I might as well fight you when I have a keep behind walls. Because I think that I think that Set's I think Set's best argument for fighting here would be to take the city, hold the walls, turn around on Straff and fight him there, rather than let Straff take Luthadel, become the Emperor, and then wait for Straff to come kill him in his own dominance. Yeah, but if they do attack the keep, then Straff comes on him from behind, you know. No, because he's already in the walls. But his army, his army attacks outside the If walls. Set can take the walls, he can hold Straff. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a question of, like, can he take the walls? Yeah. Yep. Anyway, um... It just feels, it, it, it just feels very, like, it feels very like Set to find out that Penrod has worked with Straff to subvert him and just attack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because he's fucked. Once once the vote is against yes. him, he's fucked. Set knows he's already dead. Yeah. Knows he's already dead. Uh, chapter 40, uh, Vin is uh, hurt. She wakes up. Uh, Ellen's there. And uh, he's oh, like, Oh, we yep, skipped over uh, Zane has poisoned Straff again. I definitely said that. <laughs> yeah, then you didn't skip over it. <laughs> I was like, Zane keeps trying to poison Straff. Missed it. I was uh, thinking about Penrod. That's fine. It was it was earlier before we even got into that yeah. discussion, so it's so fine. Um... um but yeah, Vin goes to touch him and he flinches. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's a little dramatic. Both of them are very fucking dramatic people. Mistborn coming to the CW. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Reen's voice is like, she, she's gonna fucking abandon you. Fuck him. Get out of here. Um, yeah. Orser's not there because Orser is currently consuming another body. Getting a new dog. Yeah. Uh, Orser's also dead. Uh. Well, yes, it is... Ten soon. Uh, crazy. What a fucking twist. We'll get there. Anyways, uh, Ellen leaves Vin and goes back to sleep. And Zane is there. Fucking Zane. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, those assassins. That was totally set. Mm-hmm. Totally. Not me. It's nope. a great, it is a great ploy. Oh, it is. This Especially manipulation. He planted, well done. Yeah, he planted yeah. the person in Set's keep so that Vin would see. Yeah. It's yeah. big brain. Fuck Zane. Uh, to then is welcome back to the nerd table. At this point of set attacks, he is dead. If he waits, things may change. He still wants to live. He's a survivor. But he knew he's he was dead. dead. They literally set say it. says it. He's like, I already yeah. know I'm dead. Yeah, they set. already say it in this book. He's like, they. he took a gamble coming into the keep. If he yeah. loses, he knows that he's dead. I just, Set seems like the character to me personally that would go down fighting. Yeah. But that is my interpretation of. Him. I also don't don't think Set knows how to sneak out without help from the city council. Like he doesn't know about the little scaw holes in the walls. So the idea, the the only way I could see him thinking that he can get out is by having his army come and die, creating a hole for him to escape through. You know what I mean? Like I could see him literally putting forty thousand people to death to run away. Yeah, probably. And yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Or sure, new body. He's like, I, uh, yeah, you know what? The dog's not so bad. It's got good bones. Yeah. Um, and he didn't break the contract because he didn't kill anyone. Nobody he just died. Hurt them. Well, he didn't kill them. They definitely died. Yes. But he didn't do the killing. Uh, uh, and <laughs> he reveals that not only did the chondra, uh not exist before the Lord Ruler's ascension, but that there's some way for the Lord Ruler to control them, and so that's why they have the contract is because there's something. Yeah. And, and he's like winking at her like. There's, There's something there. Something there about elements. Vin, wow, I talk really weird when I'm trying to wink at the same time. That Vin was decides bizarre. to experiment on Orsor. It's like, what if I just... Yeah. Duralamin. <laughs> Which... Vin... Vin is not a scientist. Vin and does also, not like, understand. Orsor is like a person... Like, Vin needs to just be a little bit more careful about how she treats this person. Yeah. Because she's very reckless with them. And, like, she's also kind to them sometimes, but, like... So there's a, there's some toxicity in this relationship. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Vin's frontal lobe, or whatever it is, is not fully developed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever develops when you hit, like, 24. Yeah. Frontal lobe, tem- I don't know. Temporal. Temporal shift. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, Orsor gets, like, hurt. 
He's yeah. like, he's a, he's like, please, please do not ever do that again. And Vin is like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah. I did not know that would happen. I was careless. I was, I'm so sorry. And in that moment, I, I literally was like, oh God, like, ah. I, I, I felt so bad. I care a lot about Orsur or Tensoon, yeah. I guess, even though like, it's weird. Yeah. I like, this is one of my favorite characters in this book. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 like, I kind of, this is the direction that I was hoping this plot would go, because you were like, oh, I feel weird about it, and I was like, no, no, oh, it's going to yeah, be, yeah. it's going to be good, and I feel like it has been fantastic, so, great, great job, Brandy, Brandy Sandy. Um, uh, so, move on to chapter 41, uh, yep. we get Sazed and Tindwell again, they're, they're still, they're researching hard. Yes. Um, and. They got no time for anything else. They haven't slept. Yeah, it's it's fun to read like an intellectual debate over the course of chapters. Uh-huh. It's really cool the way that I think Brandon Sanderson plotted this out. Uh huh. Um, My favorite part is when, like, Sezad is like to Vin, you know, like, have you gone through the process of like this scholarly process of g- g- gaining information and mm-hmm. like analyzing it or whatever? And then he's like, well, no. How the fuck was she? Of course she fucking hasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where would she get that information from? I taught her to read. Yeah, that like, was Like, Sazed right. literally knows the date that she learned how to read because he's the one that did it. Exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're, the Tindwell and, and Sazed are trying to figure out why Quan suddenly went from, like, yeah, like, Alendi sucks, like, taking the power from the well, like... Like, I don't think he's the hero of ages to, no, we need to have a backup plan to murder this guy if he gets to the well. Like, because they're like, well, the deepness still has to be a threat. Like, the deepness still has to be dealt with. And so, like, murdering him seems like a weird thing, especially when he's like, oh, he's he's a good dude. I just don't think he's actually the hero of ages, but he's still, like, doing his best. They're very confused with this, and honestly, so am I. (laughs) Uh, Chapter 42. Ellen is like, okay, we got, I, I, guys, it's getting cold. It's winter. I have a plan. We're going to cut down houses that are made out of wood, and we're going to burn them for heat. Mm-hmm. And hope that we do not burn down the tenements. Yeah. I, okay, I know that not all tenements burn down in really horrific fashion. I get that, but I am also... In my adult life, a New Yorker. And New York lives deep in my heart. And the tenement fires in New York are... Like, the, the tenement museum to the fires is one of the most, like... It's it's not, like, top. Because I will say, like, number one for most, like, emotionally devastating museum, definitely Hiroshima. Uh, number two, the 9-11 Museum in New York City. And then, like, somewhere between, like, three and five is that tenement fire museum. And so every time they're like, we're going to cut down buildings so that we can burn fires in the tenements to keep the ska warm. I'm like, please, please, for the love of God, I don't, I don't want to read about the ska tenements burning to the ground. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it's that just, was a thing. Yeah, it's the reason why uh, there are so many fire escapes on the outside of New York City apartment buildings is because of those tenement fires. Um and yeah, it's just, there's just a little, there's just this little, every time they say tenement and then he's like, we're going to burn fires in the tenements. I'm like, oh no. I mean, it, they either burn to death or freeze to death. So yeah, pick, pick your poison, I guess. Like, I don't know. I think there's less of a chance of them burning to death than freezing to death because they're guaranteed to freeze to death if they don't, you know, find shelter. Oh, I know. And it's just, that it's just the word tenement that is very triggering as yeah. someone who studied urban planning in New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, where I'm like, oh no, yeah. this is going to be bad. Yeah. In fact, what they should be doing is burning every other building so that if there is a fire, it doesn't spread. Because Luthadel's already a very cramped city. And so well, if you're they're gonna... not burning the build. They're yeah, taking they're... the no, no, stuff no. off of the building to warm the like large houses. Yeah, they're taking all the wood. Yeah. From houses that are unoccupied. Yeah. That's the walls. Okay. Yeah, fuck it, take it so... all. So they're taking... But buildings. they're not lighting every other house on fire. No, 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 no. no. I'm saying like... T- what if you're if you're worried about this? What you should do is like spread your buildings out because the chances of you having a fire that stretches through neighborhoods is lessened. But those are uninhabited neighborhoods. That doesn't mean you want them to burn down in a massive fire. But if would... you're taking all the wood from them and there's only stone left, nothing's burning. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm confused. I'm saying that, like, but you're, you're, you have to keep wood on some buildings because they're the tenements that people live in. So remove... But not in those... Na- but the, the tenements that people live in are, are... They're being given fuel for the fires. They're just taking the uninhabited stuff that isn't designed... They're taking the noble houses that are designed for each room to have a hearth or whatever. Right. And, and what I'm saying is that because these tenements are getting so crowded, the risk of a fire and something like that is incredibly heightened. Wait, and wouldn't so, more people watching the fire mean it's less likely to spread? I would love for that to be true, but statistically, no. Watched fires don't cause fewer fires. So wait. So then, how does the building? I'm confused. I don't get it. It does not matter. Um, what does matter is that Ellen is smart and he's trying to save people, even though he's not king. Yeah. And Penrod is too busy trying to give away the city that he's not doing anything about it. So Ellen has to like be king, even though he isn't king. Yeah. Which is interesting. And people still listen to him. You know, he um, still commands a lot of respect, especially. Put that uniform back on and you're good to go. A man named Larn, uh, which definitely feels like Brandon Sanderson was like, I don't have the energy today to think of a name. So he called the guy Larn, uh, shows up and is like, hey, I saw an Inquisitor in the city. And I was like, Marsh? Is Marsh here? But then but Marsh he's... didn't show up for the rest of the section. I was like, I want Marsh. Well, but he says that he saw an Inquisitor near the places where like the poisoned wells were. And so I'm like, that can't be Marsh. Unless Marsh is investigating and isn't the one who did it. Or maybe Marsh is chasing another Inquisitor. Ooh, we get I'm an down Inquisitor for that. battle. Yeah, that's fun. Maybe the reason that Straff doesn't end up taking the city is because Marsh is there with the Inquisitors. Oh, you think that Marsh could turn the remaining Inquisitors? They listened to him. Remember, because he was the, he was given the authority in the room by the Lord Ruler. Yeah, that's true. And maybe he's brought the Inquisitors to save Lucida. I keep thinking like. I mean, look, I know Vin doesn't want to be a murderer, but I'm like, there's so many of the problems could have been solved if L- Vin in the night just instigated a fight between the Coloss and the other armies. And I don't think it would be that hard to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm surprised they haven't tried just getting the Coloss to go fight the other armies out of, like, anger. I also feel like Vin, without murdering, could do a lot more kidnapping. <laughs> Sure. You know, like, I feel like she could kidnap Jasty's locale pretty quickly. Oh, easy. Easy. And, like, she doesn't have to kill anybody to do the kidnapping. That's true, yeah. A little pewter arm, a little bit of a grabby grab, a little bit of a fly away. Yeah, put them up in, like, a really nice house somewhere in the city, but, like, don't let them leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I'm just saying, Vin, Vin, Vin like, imagines her powers as being murder all the time. And I'm yeah, like, there's like, so many other things I'm that you could knife. do. Zane says I'm a knife. It's like, when you could be a net. <laughs> no, I'm not joking, though, right? Like, <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. Vin, Vin is so, like, determined to always just kill people. And I'm like, you could just, like, kidnap people so easily. Just literally, like, come, put, like, a metal breastplate on them, and then you could literally just shoot them into the air. True, And yeah. then catch them and then, you know. Just juggle them. Yeah. You want to change Set's mind? Just use him as a fucking juggling ball for five seconds. Right. See how he feels about going on the fucking Tilt-A-Whirl, but upside oh down. I'm pretty sure Straff would shit himself. Probably. Um, I mean, he's probably shitting himself like crazy. Probably. Straff's bowels are probably a fucking disaster zone yeah. with how much poison and antidote is in him. Even though the antidote is fixing the poison, the chemicals in his body, he probably sweats like colors. You know what I mean? Like, Straff is a... His internals are just disgusting right yeah, now. Yeah, it's nasty. Um, anyways, Ellen has a really bad idea. Oh my god, and Ellen, you goes fucking idiot. to the Coloss and is like, hey, Jastis, we used to be friends. Sorry about hap- what happened to your family. Uh, what the fuck's going on? And Jastis is like, eh, I tried you. it your way and they, hey, hey, let's not make fun of him. He's like, I tried it your way and they killed my sister. Yeah, but he's like, a little bitch about it. <laughs> he's such a wet noodle. Like, Ellen is literally like, dude, I know this sucks. But, like, you're better than this. And he's like, no. Like, what? All right. Jassy's a fucking A reminder that I need to be in uh, a, a, an absolute tank of emotions 
if my family's Look, ever murdered. He's allowed to be emotional, but he has no fucking clue what he's doing, and he refuses his to listen whole to Ellen. His family's been murdered. He's okay. doing his best. And then your friend comes to you and is like, hey, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, your friend comes to you and goes, hey, just so you know, we're not bros anymore. Get the fuck out. He's like, no, he comes to him because Justice has fucking threatened him I, and his people. And he's like, you're not going to come in and kill my people. That's fucked up. And Justice is like, yeah, I'm going to murder everybody. Like, I, This might be the least empathetic I've ever seen you. Yeah, fuck him. He literally is going to take a group of, of like psychotic killers and throw them at a city of people <laughs> and be like, yes, kill, murder, destroy. To be fair, if, if Ellen would give him the ATM, he wouldn't do that. But he doesn't have the fucking ATM. I know, but whose fault is it that everyone thinks that they have the ATM? Oh, it's Ellen's. What? Ellen had his fucking Breeze's people go convince everybody that they had the ATM. No, he had them say that he didn't have the ATM. He doesn't want people to think he has the ATM because he doesn't fucking have it. So he can't use it as a bargaining chip because it doesn't exist. And everyone's like, no, you definitely have the ATM. And he's like, no, I swear to fucking God, I don't have this ATM. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't you know. are. You I don't are. Like Jassies. You are sometimes so judgmental of my unempathetic ways towards some characters, and you're like, I just don't understand how you can't. And I get it. Like I'm autistic. I don't have empathy for most people. That's not true. But then for you to turn around after everything you've said about my empathy over these many years podcasting together, mm-hmm. and be so unempathetic towards Jassies is just it's shocking. Yeah, Jassies is a fucking murderer. I mean, you're not wrong, but so is everybody else in this fucking series. Well, I was going to say, no, Ellen isn't. Ellen is not a murderer. Yeah? Okay. Well, let's get to the next paragraph of the book. Ellen leaves the tent, uh, and in order to find out what's inside of a bag, violently murders a coloss because he just really needs to know what is inside of a pouch on his hip. Uh, yeah, that's fair. But Ellen isn't a murderer. He just violently murders a guy because he wants information about a pouch that turns out, guess what that pouch is? It's his fucking wallet. Fake money. It's a wallet. He literally kills somebody immediately after the scene for his wallet. He murders somebody for a wallet. Now, granted, that guy did eat his horse, uh, which the Coloss accept as a reasonable reason to murder somebody. But I thought that was a lie. No, it's true. Oh. Yeah. That's why they're like, oh, yeah. As long as you give a reason for attacking, they're fine with it. But sure. I just love that you're like, the only person who isn't a murderer is the person who we next see murder in this exact chapter. I just think Jassy's is a little bitch. He's like, I was hurt, so I'm going to murder he everybody. Wasn't hurt. His whole family was murdered uh-huh. because he was trying to implement his own ideals. His whole worldview uh-huh. crashed around him and he doesn't know who he is anymore and he is struggling. Uh-huh. He's, he wasn't hurt. And he went with murder. No, he went with invasion. And murder. Literally an entire village of people got slaughtered. Okay, but that was because he failed to be in control, not because he wanted them to be. He did not send them to murder Because he's taking murderers to go murder. (laughs) The way you say murder is so funny. I'm not wrong, though. Uh, Chapter 43. (laughs) Or sir... Uh, and goes to Vin and is like, yo, what's up, girl? How you doing? She's like, I'm good. He's like, good. I'm happy to hear that. So your boyfriend went to the Coloss camp? And she's like, wait, what the fuck? It's like, ah, yeah, weird. Yeah, crazy, crazy shit. Uh, suddenly, surprise Zane. He does this a lot. Surprise. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, Demu. Super sus. And Vin is like, pretty sure I, like, you know, removed him as a suspect. But if Zane says so... Mm-hmm. Shit, well, I don't know. Zane says so. So Zane's uh, a murderer who, the first thing he told me was that he's a psychopath. So I definitely have to believe him. Yeah, yeah, totally believable. Um, or so he's like, Finn, don't do it. Zane sucks really bad. She's like, ah, no, I'm sure he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we go get some more murder. <laughs> Wanton murder. You get a murder and you get a murder. So is Vin being a little bitch here? Yes. Yes. Yes, she fucking is. You agree with me. She's a little bitch. She's like... "Uh, I disagree. I think she should have killed him way earlier. Ellen Ellen flinches a little bit, so I'm going to go kill Set. Like... (laughs) 
Is that <laughs> not what happens? You're not wrong. I'm not wrong, okay? You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, Zayn fucking sucks. If Zane I was like, if I was Vin, I would have killed Set way earlier, but Sure. I would have snuck in okay, here here here's what would have happened. When Zayn in front of me said, Oh no, I do worse to the ska than the Lord Ruler did, I would have been like, cool, and then Set? Uh, Set, yeah. When Set says that he does worse to the sky than Lord Ruler did, uh, you would have seen at the top of your screen a little dialogue option that says, Nerdy will remember this. And then at about 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, Set would have been awoken to the sound of the latch on his window creaking as a coin would just shoot perfectly in, decapitating him. Uh, Just that coin goes right through the spinal cord, his head lolls to the side. Coin comes back to me. I keep it as a trophy uh, for frame, murdering frame the guy it. who willingly admits to being worse towards slaves than the Lord Ruler. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I, you know what? I would have gone back to bed. I would have gotten under my covers. And I would have slept like a fucking baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, Vin, not going to sleep like a baby. Because uh, uh, they basically go and kill... What did it, like what like a uh, hundred two hundred no no I think it's three hundred because I think they say it's thirty yes. percent of 30%, the percent yes they standing army three hundred people um, rookie numbers honestly oh Kelsey would have killed four by himself <laughs> by himself um, <laughs> I I'm now yeah. like I wish Zayn and Kelsey could have met they would have loved each other. Uh, they would have done so much worse uh, if 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 Kelsier got Zayn instead of Vin. The Luthadel would have burned to the ground. Oh, yeah. And yeah. everything would have been on fire. It would have collapsed in a blaze of glory and everyone would be dead. Absolutely. I fucking love this series. Um, it's pretty great. I know. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, so they get up to Set's... They, they go floor by floor just killing everybody. Yeah. Uh, and they get up to Set's room. And Set is like, I didn't have any Alamancers. Please don't kill my son. I, I, I did my best. I, yeah, I used my assassins already. And then Zane shows up and is like, I'm going to kill them. And Vin's like, no, don't. It's not. It's honestly, Zane, it's not even worth it. Yeah. What are we doing? What are we doing here, Zane? Yeah. And so they leave Set alive, but um, yeah, it's bad. It's so bad. Yep. Yeah. Vin has regrets. She, she, she yeah. She has a moment of clarity when this guy's like, don't kill my son. She's like, oh, fuck, I'm doing a bad thing. I'm doing a Kelsier thing. I'm doing exactly what Kelsier would have done, and that's the part of him yeah. that scared the shit out of me. And that's, 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 oh, is that a mirror on the wall? Oh, that's fucking weird. Um, and so she goes and she hides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Vin. Chapter 44. Uh, Breeze is uh, watching Set's army fuck off. Um, and he's like, oh, this is going to go very poorly. And Clubs is like, yep, we're all dead. Breeze is like, great, love that for us. Yeah, and so basically uh, they're, like, worried that the Straff is just going to let the Coloss attack and then save the city from the Coloss attack, and therefore he's not given the city. He comes in as the savior, and then they're all going to love him, and he's going to Im- reinstitute slavery. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, did it, Kelsier. Yeah, that's that's pretty much... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. Uh, Orsor finds Vin. Yeah, she's camped out in yeah. a random building that is maybe Cayman's thieving crew lair. Cayman's. Oh, no, I thought it was, like, their original thieving crew above Clubs' shop. No, because Ellen knows where that is. Does he? Yeah. Why? Oh. I, I don't know. It just says it's a shop that's, like, I just don't remember there being cubbies behind rooms with peepholes yeah I in mean, clubs that's how, they, that's how they kept watch but i, I it was weird i thought i thought because of how dirty it was that it was cayman's i thought it was the original um pre her joining the crew but i don't think cayman's lair was above a shop hmm good point um uh, yeah so i just like assumed yeah, I just assumed. He spent his, sent his spy to Clubs' shop. Yeah, but he didn't go to Clubs' shop himself. Yeah, no, so he didn't actually I don't go think there. He, I don't think he would have a like frame of reference for where it is. No, but Orsor would have known that it was Clubs' shop. Because Orsor has been there many times. But it's 10 soon. Oh, good point. It isn't Clu- Oh, it isn't Orsor. Ten soon would have never gone there. 
That's a fucking good point. It might be close to shop. I, that was just my first instinct was that it was close to shop. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that clubs a shop. I don't think clubs would have let his shop go into disrepair. I feel like clubs probably lives there. Really? He's training. The, he's in charge of the army on the wall. Like he's, he he's needs got a, a full time job. I just assumed he lived in quarters in the like palace with everyone. I mean, else. It, I I feel like his house is like down the street. He doesn't really need to. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it, was, <laughs> it was my first instinct. It doesn't say when we're the other. Like, I don't think anyone is right or wrong on I don't this. think it's, I think yeah, it's I don't think it's clear. Um, left ambiguous. I assume because of how dirty it was that it was Cayman's shop, but, or Cayman's place, but mm-hmm. it does not matter. Uh, <laughs> they have a cute conversation. I, 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 I like this a lot. I like Vin. Um, mm-hmm. This is Ellen's best action in this section, is that Vin says, I need to go north. And he says, okay. And Whatever she says, you need. Will you come with me? And he says, no. Yeah. I think that that is them moving towards a healthier relationship. healthy relationship. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I d- but I appreciate sure. Ellen is not kowtowing to her. He's being very honest, and it's it's nice. Honestly. But he also says, whatever you need, I yeah. trust you. Whatever choices you got to make, like, I trust you in this. You do what you got to do. Even, pardon me, even if I can't, like, un- ha- understand. Yeah. Which is nice. I, I wonder what it's like to trust your partner. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't know either. Crazy. Yeah. We live in constant wow. fear of each other. Uh, <laughs> Are you blinking because you need help? Yeah. This is a podcast. Uh, it's also a video. Okay, but it's it's a po- it is a nerdy wordy book club podcast. You can't do visual gags. Why? It has to be auditory anyone, gags. Anyone who is here for you have the to live gag stream audibly. To anyone <laughs> Shut up. Anyone who's here for the live stream gets the visual gag. So come hang out for the live stream. Or watch it however you want and we will make a podcast without blinking. Why? As a bit. Okay, fine. I won't blink. Don't blink. Okay. You're making it weird. You blinked first. I win. Um, all right. That is going to be chapter 45. Uh... Tinwell and Sezed uh, are still researching because th- they have not slept in a week. Yep. They're running they on fucking the for purpose. loco and glorious purpose. Uh, uh, they have yeah. another debate. Uh, Tindwell's like, is, religion is dumb. And Cezanne's like, no, it's about hope. And Tindwell's like, yeah, that's dumb. People Here, should... It's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they find that several copies of the manuscript of the rubbing have had the last sentences ripped off. Even the one that's locked in a box. How is that possible? The mist. Oh... The mist did it. Well, because the tear is exact. Mm-hmm. I so, like that. I didn't think about the mist. I feel like it has to be the mist. I don't know who else it could fucking be. I thought there was a potential that it was Zane. Because um, he's the only one I could see being able to get into the box somehow or something like that. But mist. Um, mist makes sense. Uh, yeah, that is what I just It's the mist thought. person. That or Vin it's keeps Marsh. Seeing. No. Or it's, no, because Marsh can't read. What? <laughs> he can't. Uh, yeah. He can't see, like, he can't see what's on the surface, right? Yeah, no, I, like, didn't think about that. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think Marsh, I don't think Marsh could get anything out of a piece of paper. Fair. He would just see, he would see that there's paper there, this. but unless it's written with, like, a metallic ink. Oh, Inquisitors probably have to write everything with, like, an ink that has metal in it. Or they have the carvings like they had in their palace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think that you could... I don't think they would be able to, like, read, like, normal ink. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I have... No, I, I didn't even consider it. Um, but, yeah, I think it's the mist. That would be my assumption here with the limited information that I have. I don't know. It feels like it's... I feel like mist wouldn't be able to have such a clean cut, though. I feel like l- mist is the only one that could have... Because it's not a clean cut. It's like a rip. But the rip is too exact to be, like, repli- Like, they literally line it up, and it is the exact same. And even if you rip them, like, stack them and rip them together, you wouldn't get that perfect of a tear. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, it has to be something... It has to be the mist. It's got to be Interesting. The mist. Yeah. I think you might win that one. I hope. So because I don't, I don't I even have, I don't really have another option. I need, I need some points, the, guys. The, I'm losing all the paper in the room. I get, but the one in the chest, I'm like, I don't fuck, I don't know. That's why I missed. Yeah, Could just creep that in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, 
Anyways. Oh, wow. And then we get um, arguably the funniest section of this book, which is that this Finn some three stooges comes shit. to talk to Seized and mm-hmm. is like, Tindwalt, I need to talk to Seized by himself. And so Tindwalt goes and stands outside the door and listens in as Finn is like, I don't know who to love anymore. I need I need help. And Seized is like, Mistress, I do not have a penis. I don't <laughs> think that I'm the person that you should be talking to about this. And she's like, no, give me advice. And then Seized gives her really fucking good advice yeah. because Seized recently what is love? found love. Uh, Ellen, don't hurt me. Did you? What? I have a feeling that you're making that joke, not realizing what the title of the video is. No, why would I know what the title of the video I don't look at the titles of our videos ever. The title of today's video is, What is love? Miss Born, don't hurt me. I was so close. I said Ellen. We uh, share fuck. We share a brain cell. Same brain cell. Yeah. God it's damn. just there's one that bounces between us. Hey, speaking of, you should I fucking could, like this video if you're here. I, I knew that because I'm like, she never reads the titles of the videos. So I know that you were like, but I, that, that's so funny. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Uh... Paris pays literally no attention to our content. Yeah, no attention. I don't do anything, actually. Oh, no, no, you I do... nap all day. No, 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 you... No, no, no. I'm not saying that you're not there for the content. You do the recording. After that point, unless I yeah. physically show it to you... I definitely don't run any of our socials or repostings or schedule stuff. None of that. Not, not, I definitely I mean, pay I, no No, you don't anymore. <laughs> oh, no, you pay attention. But, like, the, the number of things that I, like, post that, like, days later, you're like, the title of that video was making fun of me. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I posted that on Tuesday. <laughs> not sure you know how many accounts I run. <laughs> That's fair. No, no, no. I, do, I know exactly how many accounts you No, no. I, but it is true. You take care of, like, the Patreon and, like, the Nerdy Nightly YouTube. I just post a lot of stuff without asking you first. Yeah. And then, like, sometimes you'll, like, come up to me, like, weeks later and be like, I... Haha. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. This has been a long book club. What do you mean? It's only been three hours. Well, I that's don't, rookie numbers. I am not asking you to pay more attention, babe. It's fine. We have too much shit to pay attention to. Trust me, I know. We have to divide three and hours. conquer. Three hours. There we go. Uh, if we don't divide and conquer, nothing would ever get done. Oh, we would fucking die. So, Baldur's Gate 3 Evil Run when? <laughs> Later. Hey, that's you fine. got to stream it this weekend. I did. So, So you're going to stream next week? Is I that what you're saying? I would fucking love to. I would love... I, I want nothing more than to finish that playthrough and beat this fucking game, and yet... Great, let's go. Yeah. We just need to stop scheduling shit. Um, Deal. Um, what? I'm looking at you. What? I want to go on a date next week, but that's it. I know. Who dates I anymore? know. Sue me. In 2024. <laughs> Uh, we only work, no we date. We cut over. Oh, uh, okay. So Vin comes for advice. She leaves. Yes. Tindwell's like, "That was good advice." And then Ellen walks and is like, "Hey, I need advice about Vin." It's very funny, very yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that says that is like, "Hey, Tindwell, we need to make sure that those two are not in the city when it falls." And so Breeze gets a secret letter, and Breeze is like, "Wow, this is a letter. This is a secret letter." Um, it couldn't be more obvious. This is so suspicious. What the fuck? And so Breeze goes to the meeting and everyone comes in and is like, hey, Seizid, why are you sending secret letters? And Seizid is like, I guess I am not good at hiding. They're like, no, get rid of the fucking guards, you weirdo. Like, what the fuck? Seizid is literally like, uh, I was trying to not be suspicious. And Breeze is like, we're Don't all thieves. Suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Yeah, Seizid is not Secret good meetings that. is our whole life. Yeah. He's never done this before. It's fine. And so he is like, hey, we should probably not, they should probably not be here when the city falls. And yeah. the, everyone on the crew is like, yeah, no, you're right. Cool. We're all going to die and they're going to escape and uh, hopefully uh, they're going to get shit done later. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to send uh, Ellen and Vin out with Les Bornis and Tindwell. Yep. Tindwell's got some vital information to yeah. pass on to the keepers, so. Yeah. Yeah, Vin goes to Credit Shaw. It's like, damn, okay. Yeah, she goes, she looks at the stuff, and she's like, yeah, it's here. I really thought she was going to run into Marsh. Uh, me too. And it's like, I don't know why I came here and then left. And I was like, well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's a reason why that happened. And I think it's going to, I think it's going to have to do with um, the other medal. The other medal. The 11th medal that she burned. I think that what she saw in that room is going to somehow be relevant to the Well of um, ascension. Interesting. Okay. I think the eleventh medal is gonna come back as like a like. She's gonna like burn it near the well of ascension to see what, um, crash Kreshik Kre 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 K
Rash. Um, I was like, I was um, mixing um, fucking yeah. uh, the villain from Rogue One in my head. Uh, I think she's gonna like see what he did to like do things differently or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, but then Zayn wakes up to a super secret alarm, uh, and he's like, "Oh my god, assassin!" So he kills the assassins, and then he goes to his dad, and he's like, "What's up, dad?" And Straff's like, "Please don't kill me." And Zayn's like, "I can't, dad, because I love you." And Straff is like, "The, the fuck, fuck is wrong with yeah. you? <laughs> You're weak, boy." Uh, and so Zane yeah. goes to his mist cloak that he never wears because it's the one gift his daddy gave him, uh, and he doesn't want it to get ruined. Uh, he takes his ATM, his medals, uh, and he reflects on the spike in his chest. Definitely not relevant at all. <laughs> he's dead now, so it doesn't matter. We're no, never going to know. he's not. What do you mean? He's not dead. He has a spike in his chest. Oh. The Inquisitors can heal from weird shit. Yeah, right. If, if you don't oh. remove the spike. I was so excited that he was dead. Nope. <coughs> Not dead. He would be if Tensoon would have eaten his bones. Because they would have found the spike. But because Tensoon doesn't eat the bones, there's no way he's dead. So there's no the way there? the spike is there and it isn't, he, and that it never comes up before he dies. Yeah, it's one of those weird things where I'm like, who put the spike there? Because obviously Straff would never, because yeah. he would need a way to, like, remove Zane from the board if that ever, if he ever turned on him. Yeah. Fuck. I think the spike might have something to do with the voice. It's like a channeling rod for God. It's actually Marsh's voice. <laughs> no, no. They're Marsh all connected. Is, They're all connected. Marsh is a good guy. No, I know. Um, um, but I, I can't imagine that this spike doesn't mean that he survived that somehow. Yeah, it's weird. The Inquisitors have a bunch of them, so I'm like, well, what does one do? Like, what is this one? I don't think that give... it's one. Oh. I think that's the one that he reflects on, but I think he also probably has one in his back. Well, but it goes through. Yeah, but the one in the back is the one that you pull to kill. So I have a feeling that... I think that Zane is like Inquisitor 2.0. Hmm. Okay. I don't know, um, right. but we'll find out. But he doesn't know why Vin is able to pierce his copper cloud, mm-hmm. but the Inquisitors can do that. I don't know. Very strange. Very strange. Yeah, but Vin isn't an Inquisitor. So he could still wonder how she's doing an, it. If he's an Inquisitor, if he's got I don't think he spikes. is a full Inquisitor. I think that he's something else. But I think that it is using the same ferrochemy that makes the Inquisitors exist. Yeah. Okay, okay. So okay. I don't think Zane is dead. No, you're he right. He might be, Fuck, no, but no. I don't think so. You're right. I hate that guy. All right. Um, Chapter 47. We reacted to this. Yeah. So become a member. If it's you go really watch it. good. It's a good chapter. Uh, Vin is very sad. Uh, and then Zane shows up. They fight. Yeah. Zane <clears throat> is like, come with me. And she's like, okay. And then she snaps Thinks about back it for to two reality. Fucking, yeah. Oh, there goes gravity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there goes rabbit. He choked. He's so mad, but he won't give up that. Does he know he won't have it? No idea. Anyway, uh, Linus Wikström, thank you for 10 gifted soups. Soups? Oh my god, so much Subway. Yo, Eat thank you so fresh, much. Eat fresh, you guys. Y'all Eat been... fresh in the chat. Y'all have been wild today. Calm down. Let's fucking go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Hopefully that means that Zane is dead. Um... I wouldn't count on it. Uh, so, yeah, Zane, uh, Vin is like, yeah, no, I'm not coming with you. And he's like, you were supposed to save me. You were the chosen one. <laughs> Which, I, here's the thing, Zane. If I had known what the fuck that meant, might have, like, understood you a little bit better. But he's like, no, you're supposed to save me. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? You're going to find out because he's not dead. Vin uh, basically gets her ass kicked yeah. because Zane has ATM and she, and doesn't. she doesn't. And then she realizes. She out-ATMs the ATM. <laughs> She uses the ATM in Zane's body to beat him. Basically, yeah. Which I think is only possible because, like, I don't think a normal person could pull this off. Ah. Uh. I think that Vin is able to do this. Well, actually, uh, like, I don't even think a pewter arm would be able to do no, this. No, but the tin, the pewter arm, and the fact that Vin is stronger than she, like, should be. I think also, I think that it is that she's burned ATM enough that she knows exactly how far in the future it lets you see. Vin can create paradox. You know what I mean? No, but it's not a paradox. I think that it <laughs> is... Funny. I think that what it is is she is... I think that ATM 
shows you exactly a certain amount in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you know the exact timing of that amount, you know how to move just after it, right? Sure, yeah. But I think that even a pewter arm who's looking at someone who has the, like, strength and the, like, speed wouldn't know how far in the future the ATM is letting their opponent see. So it's a mixture of their allomancy, but also their knowledge of what the experience of moving on ATM is like that right. allows her to circumvent it. Okay, yeah. I don't think that anyone could do this. I only think a Mistborn familiar with the feeling of ATM would be able to look at it and know exactly how far ahead he is. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's a really sick fight. There's yeah, some awesome. really cool, like... um mechanics in there um and we get we get the reveal not only not only not only is or sore not or sore or sore is ten soon uh, yep and it's ten soon works for zane working for zane ten soon in his final moments as ten as the dog because he's gonna be something else later yeah he's still alive maybe well we don't know he might go get executed by his people for breaking contract uh ten soon is like Zane, be careful. Be careful. She, she knows she secrets knows. about me. She knows the thing. The thing. And Vin is like, oh, Duralman, soothing. And then she can yeah. control Tensoon's body into attacking Zane. Yeah. He, Tensoon gives up their secrets in order to save her life because yeah. she was nice to him like twice. Hey, they had a growing relationship that, like, they were learning a lot about each other, okay? Condra, Condra life is so hard that just being kind of nice a couple of yeah, times no and friends. also being um, mean the other percentage of the time is wild. She wasn't mean. She was totally ignorant. She had zero understanding or context. And she learned. That's her intention. But the way that it plays out for Tensoon is passive-aggressive violence. <laughs> Violence? Well, yeah. I mean, she literally, like, causes Tensoon a significant amount of pain in her ignorance. From? Trying to soothe him. Oh, oh, that. I thought you meant, like, taking, like, the body. I was like, I don't... Well, no, I'm talking about when they soothed Tensoon mm -hmm. to try shit out. And then we're shocked to find out it caused wild pain in Tensoon. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, this this <clears throat> twist did not see it coming. No. Nope. Well done. Well fucking Didn't played. think about it at all. Didn't even consider it. Um, so Condra replacing Condra never entered my brain yeah. once. Consider me very impressed. Um, no. Yeah, Vin wins the fight. Uh, she's able to get the A team. So, so she gets the A team, but it's just A team covered in lead. And I was like, oh my god, what if there, she's going to use lead yeah. as a metal? But then I was like, oh well, if Zane knew that lead did anything, he wouldn't fucking give it to her. So yeah, and also like I was because there was a part of me. That I was like, oh, why Why didn't he give her something that would poison her? But then I was like, oh, because she might have used it when he wasn't there. And so he, that wouldn't have gone, that wouldn't have helped him. Because mm -hmm. um, he's fairly convinced that she'll only use ATM with him. But if she were to use it somewhere else, he wouldn't want her poisoned trusting, while well, trusting him. Yeah. Because that would look bad. Yeah. So it's pro I so it makes sense that it's a metal that just doesn't do anything rather than Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. It's just it's just lead. It's not important. Um Yeah. But uh No, it's an incredible yeah. fight. And uh, Tensoon being like, do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. I was like, fuck, this is cool. Tensoon also is like, I'm not gonna take Zane's body. He's a monster. <laughs> Literally anything else but that. But also him being like, I I, I thought it was cool, Tensoon being like, uh, oh, no, there's enough bones from that other dog that I think I can, like, fix this one up enough. I can take this bones and, like, and these bones so and wild. I can make a full skeleton. What, like, what, what kind of monstrosities could a Condra create if they were willing to get a little bit experimental? Is they, that how centaurs come into existence? Maybe, no, maybe they that's how evolution exists. Hmm... Oh yeah. my god, we could get so many hybrids. Yeah. If they work to get like Yeah, I don't what know. What if a what if a chondra like ate a horse and then like a human's penis and it could be a unicorn and it just has a dick? It probably could. Cool. Pro probably. That might be a thing. Cool. Can dragon. <laughs> uh yeah, and so Vin is Vin does get stabbed in the boob. Yeah. Uh so she's bleeding from the tit. And she runs, not to Sezed, but to Elend. 
cute. Uh, chapter 48. Chapter 48. Ellen is, like, figuring out what to do with the fucking Colas. And Vin runs in, and she's bleeding. And she's like, I'm sorry, I killed your brother. And he's like, I'm sorry. My brother? I had a brother. I had a brother? Uh, and then he's like, I'm going to go get Sazed. And she's like, don't leave me. And he's standing there watching her bleed out, like, uh... Okay, then I'll take you. Oh, Let's fuck. go. How... <laughs> we'll go together. This is a problem. I I do actually have to... No, we need say that. Yeah, you're going to oh, die. Oh, Tensoon also is like, I, uh, my contract's broken, so I have to go to my homeland. And that's why we're worried that Tensoon's going to get executed. Yeah, yeah. So Ellen runs uh, her over to say Zed. Say Zed starts doing surgery on her. And mid-surgery, uh, Vin goes, let's get married. <laughs> Can't wait till tomorrow. All right. I have a needle in my boob right now. Yeah. But uh, I really want to marry you because I have seen the light. I have realized that, like, you're actually great. And that... James Ross brings up, also, I may have been emotionally cheating on you with your brother for a while. Which, like, wasn't... Like, I honestly didn't think Vin was, like into Zane, except for this, the, like, last, like, moment. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, wait, what the fuck? Oh, we, then he we skipped over her. Zane kissing her while he's stabbing her in the boob. Very weird. Zane Very weird. Zane is fucked up. Zane is fucked up. But also, If you're gonna God kiss someone like, while penetrating them, it shouldn't be with a knife, okay? Yeah, no, no, don't use a knife. Um, yeah, God is like, no, I wouldn't tell you to kill her. And I'm like, wait, why? Oh, we skipped over that. I mean, I don't know what it Fucking means. Fucking Zane has the deepness in his head. It's the mystery. But if Vin is the hero of ages, they wouldn't want Vin to go defeat the Deepness. The Vin- Deepness wouldn't want to be... No, they do. They want Vin to go to the Well of Ascension. Why? To let them out. Sure, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Zane is dead. That voice... Is now in Zane's body. Like Zane, okay. dead. Zane's body, not dead. Okay. That voice running Zane's body. Great, love that. Mm-hmm. Love that. I'm us. calling it now. God took over Zane. Zane is God. No, Zane is dead. Sure. Uh, uh, so yeah. yeah, so anyway, um, so with a needle in her boob, uh, Vin is like, this, do you, do you know any religion that has like the fastest possible marriage? And says is like, yep. Yeah. And she's like, okay, ow, uh, I love you. And Vin, uh, Ellen is like, I guess. Yep. Love you too. Yep. Yep. Great. We're married. Oh, cool. we're married. And says is like, no sex tonight. Uh, <laughs> no sex. <laughs> you need to heal. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then Seiza kind of lays out the plan for Vin and Ellen leaving by being like, you have to go to the Well of Ascension to save everybody. And they're like, yeah. And he's like, well, that was a that lot was easy. easier than I thought it was going to wow. be. Wow. You know what? You should also take Lust of Bornis with you as a lookout. Oh, good, good call. Great. Good call. Oh, yeah. Good plan. All right. Oh, and Tinbo. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Sounds good. Just the four of us? Great. Seiza just like, this went way too well. Like, Seiza's how like, did why I did I have that? a secret meeting? Yeah. Yeah, literally. Why? I didn't need to involve anyone else in this. This was yeah. so simple. He does also lie. He's like, I totally know where the Well of Ascension is. <laughs> I was joking with Carlos earlier. I was like, how funny would it be if that map just worked? Yeah. Was that on the podcast? The, it's, it's, we're over three hours. I can't remember. But yeah, I was like, it would be so funny if Seiza like draws them a map and they follow it to the Well of Ascension. They're like, wow, Seiza crushed it. Yeah. This is like guessed. very accurate. I love that. Um, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, Austin. Lester Bornis gets to go on Vin's honeymoon and listen to her get railed. <laughs> Woof. Nicholas Reed says that was on the podcast. I'm sorry, we're just it repeating ourselves podcast. at this point. There you go. Well, that's that's the end of it. Say Zed, it ends with Say Zed being like, ah, I hope they don't hate me for lying to them about this. Fucking crazy. Such a good book. Like, like It's not as good as the first one. I feel like the first one was a little bit tighter, a little bit more fun, but I feel like it's still an incredible book that I'm enjoying greatly. I mean, yeah, this is definitely less fun. Yeah. Um, but uh this sh- the Condra shit is incredible. Like yeah. Yeah. A new podcast record? I don't think so. I don't, we think we definitely did over 330, but we still haven't done high-low and everything, so we still have to smut corner. Oh, no. What's the longest Nerdy Wordy book club? I actually don't know. I thought it was almost four hours. Did we do almost four hours? I thought we did that one time, yeah. Oh, my but God. But I'm not sure. 
Um, that brings us to the end of our show. We're going to yeah. wrap up here. Uh, buy your dice at MissyMountainGaming.com. Use the code NerdyNightly15 for 15% off. If you're here, like the video because it would be really rude if uh, you didn't. So do that. Um, and subscribe if you're not already. If you were like here for three hours but you're like, nah, I don't want to subscribe. Do it. Fucking do it right now. Do it. We're going to do High Low uh, where... Yeah. I do my, like... Oh, I'm letting you do it. Come on. Great. So Nerdy's family used to do a thing where at the dinner table, they kind of all, like, were not the best of friends. And to bring them together, they decided to bring Hilo. They would celebrate each other's highs and commiserate each other's lows. So we're going to do that here, and we're going to do my high, Nerdy's low, uh... Wait, yes. Yeah. My low, Nerdy's high. So we compliment Sanders, this bitch. Okay. I'm getting it. I'm getting okay, it. Okay, Crown of Swords. Uh huh. Podcast number three, mm-hmm. chapters nineteen to thirty-one was three hours and twenty-five minutes. Well, damn, we're getting close to that. That might be the longest one. Knife of Dreams, chapter twenty-one to twenty-seven, also three twenty-five. <laughs> Oopsie. Ooh, Gathering Storm was three twenty-nine. Chat prologue to chapter twelve. Damn. Uh, and then Gathering Storm 36 to 41 was 328. And then Gathering Storm 42 to the end was 327. Then Gathering Storm Full Book Recap was 320. Gathering Storm, we talked a we lot. We had a lot. We had a lot It's, cause, to talk it's about. because after not enjoying um, yes. uh, the slog, that first Brandon Sanderson book hit hard. Oh, it did. Uh, but the longest um, book club, guess which book it's in? I don't know. The Memory of Light? Yep. Yeah, I figured. The last battle. Guess how long it was. I don't know. What? <laughs> uh, memory of Light, uh, the last battle was five hours and two minutes. <laughs> I I think because we were so upset. Did not realize. No, no, we were so happy with the last battle. It was the next week that we were upset. Oh. Fair. We liked the last battle. Fair. There was a lot We were happened. talking about the whole thing. Yeah, it took us five hours to talk about the last battle. Oopsie. Um, Anyways. Yeah. Um, My high <laughs> of this book. So, no, this is not... This isn't even close not, to a record. Not even close. Um, my high for this book is the Chondra reveal. Uh, we never got to know Orsor, really. We knew Tensoon, but that kind of makes it even more interesting. Mm-hmm. And also knowing that he was working for two different masters and was like literally like you know comparing Vin to Zane when he would when he was like talking about it yeah very cool but that reveal was incredible that reveal s fucking tier what's your low um Zane sure yeah I mean like we get good moments with Zane in them but the, the no it, it's not even Zane it's it's Vin being like I v- Ellen can't understand me because only a Mistborn could. I just is like, I don't know, not my favorite. There's so much good stuff in this book that I just kind of like gloss over that stuff. Um, Because there isn't much of it, thankfully. I think that if there had been more of it, it could have ruined the book for me. Uh, So there's just enough that I was like, "Eh, I don't like this, but not enough that I actually like care that much. Yeah. It doesn't get in the way of the stuff in this book that I love. Yeah, that's fair. I think my low is honestly the whole Breeze Alrianne thing. Interesting. Why? It's just super weird, and I don't think it, like, is adding anything to either the plot or the conversation right now. See, I... Ooh, interesting. Okay. I think it's fascinating. I think I, it's interesting, but right now, it's just that Alrian is literally manipulating Breeze with Alamancy to sleep with her, even though he clearly has mixed feelings and guilt around it, and she's like, fuck it, I don't care anyways. Oh, I don't think it's a good thing. Yeah. I just find it fat. I think the reveal, the reverse reveal, that Breeze is not manipulating her, but that he's being manipulated, it was, uh, I think that, like, that is very fascinating to me. I do, and I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting, but I I understand why she has daddy issues. Fucking weird Sets a monster. Yeah. Oh, no, I think it's going somewhere. I just, I found the reveal that, because everyone's like, oh, Breeze... What are you doing, dude? Yeah. And then to find out that it isn't him, I actually thought was uh, interesting. It, it allowed us to learn so much about Breeze in this section. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little bit disappointed in Vin for not letting him know. Fair. Fair. Okay, yeah. I think things have been moving quickly. I hope that Vin lets him know before he before she leaves town. Yeah, because she hasn't, he deserves to she know. hasn't had a conversation with him. But yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Because, yeah, the Zane stuff is kind of wonky. But that one, it's just a weird moment. What's your high? 
Um, I know there's so many good ones. It's really there's so many good. Uh, it's the conversation with Dachshund. Um, I good call. It was so I felt it so deeply. Yeah, the like regret. And obviously, I don't have any regrets like that. I've never killed anybody, thankfully. Um, you know, I would if I needed to. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, I've never been in a position where I needed to. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I just, um, I, I empathize with him so much. And we don't get a lot of him in this book, not as much as the first book. But uh, I, I, I can empathize with the loss of a friend and wrestling with the, your friend's legacy in their absence. Yeah. Um, that's something I do know. And, uh, yeah, just really, I, I love that conversation so much. In, in a section of wonderful action and cool reveals and all of the, like, insane big stuff that happened here, um, the thing that sits with me the most is just the honesty of Docs and just living with what he has done. And, um, yeah. Oh, Connor yeah. Crane brings up, did you guys talk about Breeze not being Ska? Yeah, wild. No. Breeze faking being Ska is such a interesting... What? Yeah, you I, don't think that's cool? No, it, it is. I just, I was like, I didn't really know what to, to say about it, I guess, because it's like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> I can just, like, I can totally relate to disliking high society so much that you would rather be seen as... Yeah, you're like, I'm sick of this fucking bullshit. Like, y'all are nightmares. I'm going to go to a place where people are actually more honest. Like, I would, yeah. It's it's the honesty. Yeah. It's, you know, like, because I've worked in fine dining a lot. And I've catered and served very, very wealthy people for a lot of my life. And I don't like them. (laughs) And the reason I don't like them isn't because they're bad people, but because they're so distanced from reality yeah well from from issue right from from difficulty Mm -hmm. they don't understand that other people could have problems that they don't it's why you see all these like financial gurus on tiktok who their their financial guruism always boils down to already have money money. yeah Yeah, 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 yeah. because they, they, they don't they don't see the struggle in anything and look i live a very privileged life i'm not saying that like i've ever you know i I'm, I'm not rich and I wasn't rich growing up, but like I've, I've always had food on the table. I'm, I'm yeah, in a position sure. that a lot of people aren't. And I totally respect that. And the, 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 but the elite level of wealth is, but my, I also watched my parents work to build a life throughout my life. Sure. Like my parents literally raised their tax bracket before my eyes by working 80 hour weeks and by, you know, doing everything in their power to make our life better. Yeah. And I, I'm so grateful for that from them. Because I have that work ethic of I want to raise my tax bracket. I don't expect to just sit comfortably in a tax bracket, right? Right. And I, I'm, I, you know, you see how hard I, I'm willing to work to do that. Yeah. I think that seeing Breeze be like, fuck that. I'm going to go be a ska is just, it's, it's, he's so interesting. I love him yeah. in a very weird way. At the end of book one, someone I think in the question channel was like, who is your favorite secondary character and why is it Breeze? And I think mm. in book one, he was less interesting to me. Yeah. But... We didn't um, know much about him. No, but I... I not, I'm i like, I get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really, really, really do. He's fascinating. Well, and I love that his, his like, lack of emotional connection to women does not come from him being asexual. Even though I think ace representation is awesome. And I, I, I think that, like, there, there's a really interesting story to tell with an ace representation in that, in, like, a soother. But I think that for what this book is about, particularly around Vin and her gender relationship within the, like, structure of the Empire, I think it's really fascinating to put Breeze in as a character who has sexual desires, but has this deep understanding about the fact that he cannot really know if they're reciprocated. He's, he's yeah. in a very interesting way, very, like, demisexual. Um and wants to be loved and doesn't believe in the ability of other people to love him without him using his powers on them. Mm-hmm. And so there's this, like, sadness to it that uh, allows for him to be taken advantage of by Alrian and how he's going to respond when he finds out that he's being taken advantage of. I think it's going to be really interesting. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Good book club, babe. 
Hell yeah. If you like this video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm got us hungry and we must feed her. This episode that algorithm got us is... Um, Vin? Like... <laughs> it's Vin! Okay. Uh, if you uh, want to follow us on the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Polaris. Please. Please go leave us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Our rating is a 4.7, and I think we're a five. So, uh, you're a 10, but I'm a five. I'm a New York two, but, you know, I'm a, like, Idaho five. Uh, yeah, go read those, or go leave those, or and read them. You know what, both. There are some funny reviews from the Wheel of Time era, so. Oh, God. Yeah, go, go do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Bye. That's, that's it. Get the fuck out of here. We're going to do Smart Corner. Get out of here. So how long do you think Seizad can make his tongue? Like, do you think he could, like, lick her cervix? And would that feel good? I don't know because it, he would have to, like, bulk. I don't think he can focus bulk one muscle. We've never seen him bulk just a bicep or something, right? So I think that mm. his whole, like, his, his whole <clears throat> stature would have to get bigger. And I don't know how big he can get. Yeah. So can terrorist men make their penises bigger by having a smaller penis for an amount of time? Because that's the ferrochemy I need. Well, not you're not just not having. I penis would live smaller. my whole life with it just like barely poking out, so that when I needed it, it's just like fucking. I don't think Johnny it's that Sims, concentrated. You know? I don't think it's that concentrated. I think any like I think it's it's either all body or no, nothing. You, mm -hmm. you you know like you can definitely probably. So what we're make saying is that bigger. we have we're we flipping our pewter arm conversation. Where now, now you think that it's all body or none. For Farrakimi, yes. Okay. Yes, that is what it seems to be like. Okay. Which I think kind of like uh, it enforces what I was thinking earlier with um, Alamancy. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really fun way to distinct, to d differentiate the two, personally. But um, I do have a question for you. Yeah. So if Zane masturbates with his left hand, do you think that he thinks it's the voice of God jacking him off because it feels different? What? Why? <laughs> It's like a joke among men that like, if, you know, sometimes you like, you want it to feel like someone else jacking you off, so you jack off with your left hand. Or you sit on your hand until it goes numb and then it feels like somebody else is jacking you off. Well, I've never heard of this. Mm. So I'm learning so much. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that that was a thing. Do you think that Zane ever gets like jerk off instructions from God? Oh, definitely. Yeah. But it always ends with kill him. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, no. he It's always ruined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he never actually gets to finish. It's just constant it's edging. edging. Like, Zane is so fucked up because he is being edged by God. And God is going to take over his body life. and, like, actually finish. And it's yes. going to be years of edging built up. So God is actually just making Zane into a perfect it's orgasm. It's going to be a lot of cum. Like, he's going he's gonna to be like, what do I, how do I clean this up? Like, what, what, how do I get rid of spatter the walls. That? Yeah. Oh, it's in the mist. It's going to be messy. I came all over the mist. It's going to be very... And the mist is going to get upset. You know what? I, I don't think the mist is going to appreciate that very much. So, I think the mist is going to kill Zane. Judging by the ellipses in chat, um, we are degenerates and, are, and people How can't keep up with us. How is this any worse? Than the other smart corners we've done. I don't know. I feel like we, we're talking about some, some pretty specific online kink stuff. That's why Zane is so edgy. Ba-doom. Hey, That's got it. That's the end of the podcast. Bye, guys. Well done. Bye, guys.